All right, looks like I was muted there, but what I was just saying is we've got a hit a 7-0 in my first draft today. Embercleave's really, really good. Going to try and do something different with this draft. If y'all haven't tried Cube before, I highly recommend it. It's a very different way to play Magic, but it's, uh, for those who do play, it's routinely one of the things they enjoy most. Ooh, okay. Okay. Shark Typhoon seems really, really strong. Hi there, iPhone Fan 5 and Achenar. Good to see you both here nice and early. Yep, best looking cards in this pack to me are Legion War Boss and Shark Typhoon. I think I'm just going to take the Typhoon here. Mirari's Wake is very interesting. I imagine there's some broken things you can do with this, but a little bit too much of a build around for me. Growth Spiral's probably fine. Steel Overseer actually seems pretty good in this draft format because there actually are artifact creatures that you can build around, unlike in Cube, where it was kind of luck of the draw whether you'd get anything to do with this, but Shark Typhoon's really strong. Hard to go wrong with that. Oh boy, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Long time. Very excited. A little confused as to why these look like Theros packs up here, but... The great thing about Cube is you can play basically any card, even the most annoying card in all of Standard, and just feel good about yourself doing it, because you only have one copy, and you had to, like, spend a first pick on it. Okay, what do we got here? A bunch of blue cards that all point me at various archetypes. We've got, uh, there's definitely a big blue-white flyers archetype. You can see Favorable Winds, Deputy of Detention, Hanged Executioner, Staggering Insight, all kind of falling into that blue-white evasive category. You got Crackling Drake. We want to go blue red. Card sort of synergizes with Shark Typhoon. I also just take Nyx Bloom Ancient. This card is good with Shark Typhoon as well. Just an excellent card to ramp out. Broken with almost anything if you untap with it. I don't want Grey Merchant. I'm not excited to take Evolving Wilds right now. The question is, do we want to go kind of slim? Play some kind of aggressive card draw thing with Ruin Raider slash Staggering Insider. Let's go Nyx Bloom Ancient. Let me try an exclamation. I'm going to do something a little different than I did last time. No red aggro. We're going to ramp. And in the ramp category, we've got Migration Path is very strong. Tristani Discordant's nice because you actually do want some anti-aggro tools here, but I find it pretty hard to pass up Migration Path. Stomping Ground and Temple of Epiphany. One of these might wheel to us. Mantle the Wolf. Definitely a strong anti-aggro card for the red decks, at least. Play against the red decks. But not terribly interested in that yet. Okay, Breeding Pool and Golos are both really tempting for this kind of archetype we've got here. Karn's Temporal Sundering, not super exciting. You gotta get a lot of legendary cards to make this work. Not necessarily looking to do that yet. Between Breeding Pool and Golos, it's tricky. Good mana is just really valuable, though, and there's a chance we wield that Growth Spiral from the first pack. Hmm. Given Nixlum Ancient, I feel like we're probably not as likely to be doing, like, five-color stuff, I guess... I guess Nyx Bloom works with five color stuff. It's very good with Golos, certainly. All right, I'll take Golos. Let's 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 do the the fun stuff. If we're cubing for the stream today. Hmm. Very little here. Ooh, Mythos of Nethroi is in this cube. That's cool. I wasn't sure it was. Uh, so given that we're doing five color stuff anyway, probably just taking Mythos. None of these archetype cards. There's like a sack deck. There's a flyers deck. Neither of these is looking great to me. Jace is cool, but heavy heavy blue. And I kind of like the idea of taking cards that actually give me some defense against aggro. Mythos is also just super flexible in general, so I'll take that. Right now we're looking for dual lands and powerful gold spells that are flexible. Guild Globe is tempting here. Helps me fix my mana a little bit, but Knight of Autumn also just looks great. Um, pretty good against every kind of deck we could see. We already probably want to be playing green and white given we have Mythos. More interested in this than I am in Neutralizer Gruel Spellbreaker. All right, Knight of Autumn it is. Going to be looking to take basically every dual land we see, if there's not something really compelling in the pack. At least the good duels like the uh, Shock Lands and Check Lands. Okay, Temple of Abandon kind of fits that theme. Even if we're not playing red yet, we do have Golos, and there's a good chance we'll end up doing some red stuff eventually. So I will... Yeah, I'll pick up the Temple. Rupture Spire is much, much worse, even if it's a five-color land... Taking your second turn of the game off and doing nothing there, much, much worse than taking your first turn off to lay a temple down, so I'm just going to take the temple. Okay, not a lot here for us. Frilled Mystic fits if we're doing green-blue stuff, which is still possible, I guess. 
Gravebreaker Lamia does not impress. Destiny Spinner. It's an early creature that does save us from counter spells, which is relevant. It's not the worst thing we could do. And is there really any chance that we play Frilled Mystic? I'm not sure. We've seen a lot of counter spells whoosh past us already. I'll pick up Spinner. It's a two drop. Not excited about it. All right, got the original pack back, and there is a growth spiral, so I'm going to pick that up nice and easy. Legion Warboss Wheeling is a big surprise. This card seems really strong. But no skin off my back. Hachinar. So cube is a weird, is a weird thing, um, because you'll often see like four or five cards in your first pack that all look outstanding. Um, as far as what to pick early, it really it sort of sometimes just depends what kind of mood you're in. In general, um, you'll want cards that are powerful and flexible early. You usually don't want to commit to an archetype on the first pick unless there's a card that's just absurd for an archetype. Like an example would be Embercleave. If you take Embercleave, you do have to play red aggro with that, but you should just take Embercleave anyway because Embercleave is ridiculous. Uh, I think I'll take the Scryland over that. Well, nah, we'll take Stomping Ground. Still don't know that we're doing red stuff yet, but we didn't really have any other choices there. I guess it's Judith over Sundering. And Melee. Okay, a lot of red in these packs that's being passed around. That's interesting. I guess I'll take Forbidden Friendship. Probably not playing that, but at least it creates defensive bodies. Yeah, Chinar, I wish I could get more into, like, cube lessons, but A, I'm not too familiar with this particular cube, and B, uh, good gravy is there are a lot of stuff people have said about cubes in general, but early on, staying flexible is just going to be really good, because even taking a thing that looks like a bomb, if it kind of forces you into an archetype, it's not necessarily open. Um, you don't really need to, like, rely on the first pick to give you the bomb. You'll have plenty of strong cards no matter what you play, so you just want to build a coherent deck. Which we're not really doing a super good job of here. We've got kind of a a free red splash if we want it. But so far we've seen nothing that makes me want it. Really want some green blue lands. Yeah, Chinar, right now I think there are there aren't too many cards in that category. I think even like Shark Typhoon is like a fine card and was a good flexible first pick, but not a card that's like absurd by any means. Uh, the cards that seem like absurd never pass these type cards to me so far are Embercleave. Um, Agent of Treachery used to be that, but it's not in the cube anymore. He was in the sealed version of this cube way back in the day. Um, all right, Temple of Mystery. Looking heck attempting. Sphinx of Foresight would be great to wheel. I'm not going to take it down. I'm just going to take this dual land. Fauna Shaman could be a good wheel as well. Knight of the Reliquary looks pretty cool. Hi there, Houdat. Okay, a few options here. Teff is just very, very strong as far as just card quality goes. A good card to ramp out to. If your opponent has only one permanent when this comes down, they might just lose on the spot. A lot of dual lands as well, plus a Mind Stone. Don't necessarily have to be like super five color here. Like, we could play this as just destroy target creature. We could go Bant with Knight of Autumn. I'm just going to take Teff. Teff is really... Uh, very, very, very strong. Great on empty board. Great against taking out any permanent your opponent's bothering you with. So yeah, not guaranteed to be playing five colors. Golos is still a totally reasonable card, even if you're not activating the ability on him. Who that? This is Arena Cube Draft. You get a free Arena Cube Draft in your account. Everybody does. You should totally uh, play it at some point. Okay, Hydroid Crisis. That was easy. Um, this is one of the cards I was looking for. Thassa. Thassa is one of those cards I wouldn't call it um, unpassable pick one, pack one. 
but it's hard to be very tempted to pick up um, in the first pack just because a lot of decks can't get rid of it and there are a lot of creatures that synergize with it but for us it's very easy hydrate crisis no question there and that's exactly what i want to be doing with nix blue ancient and go low some migration path yeah cube is the best cube is just uh i played a lot of magic online peasant cube i was i was enjoying that so much i even played it on stream <laughs> even though i knew nobody wanted to see old cards on magic online because i just love cubing so much I came in second in the uh, trophy leader position for everyone at Magic Online because I was so obsessed with that cube. And now I get to play on Arena with cards everybody knows, which is much better. Okay, Woodland Cemetery. Solid Dueland. Ooh, though, Clothis. Clothis is kind of a bomb if you can cast her. Like, just is going to gain you two life and deal the opponent two damage every turn. Is basically impossible to kill. So Woodland Cemetery really only helps me cast Mythos, and I've already got two different red dual lands for Clothis. Kind of like Clothis, she just shuts down aggro so hard and also gives you long game against control. Let's try that. Maybe we just don't play black at all. Ooh, okay, the Great Henge. Doesn't really fit what we're doing here. By the time we're trying to cast this, we have plenty of other good stuff to do with mana, so probably just Fabled Passage or Temple of Plenty. Essence Scatter's nice. Skittering Surveyor's a little slow, I think. Probably just going to take Temple of Plenty here between Knight of Autumn and Tef. Pretty sure we're playing some white in this deck. Kogla's powerful, but we've got a lot of powerful late-game cards here already. So, And Cube is not short on big late-game bombs. You really want to focus on early-game fixing and just keeping the deck consistent. So Fable Passage versus Temple is close, but I like Temple. I like getting a lot of early scry in my ramp decks, just so I'm not... Uh, Loading up too much on finishers early can curve out smoothly. All right, we've got Kiora. Kiora really only functions as a ramp spell with, like, or as a draw spell with Shark Typhoon and Nixblum Ancient and Hydrate Crisis. So there is Love Strike Beast. Love Strike Beast is a really good anti aggro card. So that's very tempting. Chapel, I don't even know that I'm playing black, so not that tempting. Thirst for Meaning. Is meh. All right, I'm between Kiora and Lovestruck Beast. How desperate am I to be fighting against aggro decks? I'll take Lovestruck Beast here. Maybe regret that. Maybe I'm overestimating how much aggro is in this format, but I think we've got a really good ramp deck, and aggro is really the only thing I'm afraid of right now. So here's Temple of Silence. Workable if I want to be playing this Mythos. If I'm not, we've got Fae of Wishes, which is fine against aggro, and probably going to have a little bit of stuff I can get out of the sideboard. Atris isn't bad if we're playing black, but I still don't know that we are. Shard, of course, is okay. Let's take Fae of Wishes here, I think. Actually, let's just take Blossoming Sands. Let's just, when in doubt, take those lands. Take those lands early and often. Wayward Swordtooth, looking really good here. Um, probably going to be playing a pretty high land count, and I imagine we'll be able to turn this card on pretty easily, since we've got a good permanent count as well. This is a 7-7 for 5, which is not that interesting. Let's just grab Sword Tooth. Hudat, no, you certainly don't keep the cards after. That would be a little too much value for Wizards to give us. Finale Devastation does uh, win the game at 12 mana, but I'm hoping we can win the game at 12 mana anyway. I'm just going to take Sphinx of Foresight. Just focusing on consistency once again. Though it is double blue, so not the most trivial card to pass. Now I'll just take Mind Stone. I think I'm pretty, pretty sure I'm not going to be doing black at this point. Just want to keep the mana a little more consistent than that. Just pick up a bit more ramp. Now you've got Reclamation Sage. Momentary Blink is very powerful if you have stuff to do with it. The only card it really works with for us is Golos, so it's not really a consideration. Let's take Reclamation Sage. Actually, I'm taking Captain Lannery Storm. This card ramps and attacks Planeswalkers, which is great. Yeah, Sage probably has a good number of targets, but I'm not sure it's the kind of card I want to be main decking yet. Here I will take Woodland Cemetery. There's some small chance I end up playing this for black, or just to be a card that lets me enable five colors for Golos. Mindstone is super good. Lovely, lovely ramp card. Just draw your cards later. I'm going to take Root Band Craig. Mana's looking pretty strong here. Thirst for Meaning, we might play that one in the main deck. Drunken Vike, it would be a lot of gems. A lot of gems. Ooh, Tartacor Slate. That's cool. All right, so still interested in lands and ramp. Voracious Hydra is very tempting. This card has this Realm Cloak Giant. Like, actual Wrath effects are definitely a way to fight aggro decks. 
Hmm, bunch of good options here. I do enjoy Hydra. Combined with Growth Spiral or Mind Stone, this can just come down and eat something on even turn three. Sometimes. But with Beanstalk Giant, Carnage Tyrant, and Voracious Hydra all in the pack, I might wheel something out of this. I grab Realm Cloaked. Normally I'm not a big Wrath guy, but this feels like a pretty good deck to be playing Wraths in. I guess we have Wayward Swordtooth, though. I'll take Hydra. That was difficult, chat. That was difficult. Alright, this pack is not as difficult. I'm just going to take Hinterland Harbor. We don't have any blue-green duels yet. Hinterland Harbor is a very good one. Pelt Collector is of no interest. Castle Garenbrig is of no interest. I guess this ramps out Nixplume Ancient, so I might pick up Castle Garenbrig if it, uh, if it shows back up. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's Here the we've goal. got, ooh, Kinan Bonder Prodigy. So this works with uh, Mindstone and... Does Kinan work with Treasure Tokens off of Lannery Storm? I honestly have no idea. We don't really have any other, like, tapping stuff for ramp. It can fetch Nixbloom Ancient and Golos off of the ability, which is nice. Well, I could just take a Leak Guard Mage. Leak Guard Mage, try to wheel the Brontodon? Sure. I am perfectly happy just grabbing Guard Mage here. Does what I want to be doing. Sulfur Falls, a decent land. Where are we at in terms of non-land cards? We've got uh, eight lands here. We've only got 19 playables right now. So do want to focus more on non-lands, I think. Gitrog Monster would be really cute if we were black. I don't think we are. Wilt is f uh, pretty, pretty medium. There's Opt, Blink of an Eye. Sulphur Falls is nice, though. Yeah, none of these cards are very exciting. I'll take Sulphur Falls. After this, we gotta take some more spells, though. Well, hi there, Gabriel. I hope this is a good... So, oh, thanks for the follow, by the way. I hope this is a good uh, stream to watch drunk. Ooh, Niv-Mizzet. That card is hard to cast. I'm gonna take Wolf Willow Haven. <laughs> Wolf Willow Haven ramps. Niv-Mizzet's a little ambitious for this deck, I think. Driven one, I mean, Act of Treason is probably going to wheel, but I'm not taking it. Uh, it doesn't have any any kind of fit in this deck. Devo 4, definitely not. I think this cube actually seems like it might lean pretty aggressive. I'm doing some four-color nonsense here because that's what's entertaining to draft on stream. And because I wanted to try and explain Ancient. But uh, overall, there are a bunch of different archetypes you can use. Blue-White Flyers looks like it's really well supported. Um, just various blue control type decks seem... Like a thing, I'm sure black green mid-range is perfectly fine. I'll probably end up playing some of that at some point. All right, we've got Emery. Emery is great with Mind Stone and does cast Golos out of the yard, but it's a little too uh, a little too weak for the for us to actually play here. I'm just going to take Lava Coil. Solid early removal. Nothing to complain about with Lava Coil. Okay, well, we got Midnight Clock. This card ramps. Raugren Triome is excellent for our deck. Fire Prophecy. All right, several tempting cards here. Um, clock. How do I feel that clock here? It would just be Fire Prophecy. I like the card selection this gives us. It's not a terrible of one mind deck with Lovestruck Beast and stuff. We already have a lot of card draw. I'm just going to take Fire Prophecy, try to be really careful that we don't lose to aggro. Ooh, Mythos of Eluna. Okay, I like that one. Escape to the Wilds is... Ooh, we got Grow from the Ashes, too. Several good cards here. This is one of those where if I could just, like, take this pack, I'd be pretty happy. I like a lot of the cards here. Escape is not a great card. This deck has a lot of expensive cards. I'm just taking Mythos. Let's try that out. Very, very flexible card there. A Tybalt is actually not a bad defensive card. I'm just going to take Disdainful Stroke, though. This has targets against basically every deck. We've got a lot of instant speed stuff. Taking Castle... Actually, do I take Flame Sweep? I guess there is no sideboarding here, so taking, taking Flame Sweep for the sideboard feels silly. But it also doesn't kill anything I have, except for Captain Lannery Storm. And maybe Night of Autumn sometimes. The Castle Garenbrig does work well with Hydra, Krasis, and Ancient. I'll take Garenbrig. Probably even play it. Slaying Fire is bad removal. Ionize is uh, an okay counterspell. I guess Keenan, we've got still nothing that really works with this card, huh? I think Ionize, probably not going to play it. Okay, opt. 
deck's a little all over the place, but I think we have enough ways to win the game in here somewhere. Terramander or Mutiny? Not really a Terramander deck. I'm probably not going to play Mutiny. It's a little bit too uh, situational. Thanks for helping each other with these, uh, with these definitions here. Okay, Temple of Malady. Small chance I play that one just to work with Golos, but probably not. Probably just going to stick with uh, this pile I've got here. We can always activate Golos with the treasure tokens off of Lannery Storm. Yeah, this is going to be fun to play. I like that Tef gives us a way to win if we accidentally draw our deck and uh, can't finish our opponent off with creatures. Ooh, of one mind. All right, this might be playable. We've got a... Uh... A good number of humans and non-humans. Interesting. Okay, so... We've been auto-selected to have 17 lands, which means we need to make three cuts. Definitely not playing uh, planes in this deck. And I would definitely like some forests. I can't believe the auto... <laughs> How did the auto mana not give me any actual forests? <laughs> like, seriously. Okay, so we've got... Let's, let's figure out the mana after we figure out what cards we're actually playing in the deck. So, Chart, of course, feels like not what I want to be doing. Attacking with early creatures is not at all guaranteed. Destiny Spinner is pretty weak, unless we're playing specifically against Counterspells, and I feel like we can probably work our way through Counterspell decks. I like the removal. I like the ramp. Thirst Remaining... It's cool this can, like, discard Wolf Willow Haven and, like, Nyx Bloom Ancient, so we have some enchantments to drop to this, but is it worse than Opt? I pretty much like everything on the high end here. Actually, I actually might want Charter Course more than Thirst for Meaning, huh? This is just, like, so rarely going to be card advantage, and we're not really actually holding up mana instant speed to do very much. Okay, we'll do that. And now figure out the mana, 17 lands, plus Mindstone, Growth Spiral, Wolf, Wolf, Haven seems... This could even be an 18 land deck, honestly. Hmm. Maybe we don't actually want Lovestruck Beast all that much. Yeah, let's say we hopefully won't need this to hedge against aggro. If we get run over by Mono Red a bunch of times, maybe I'll change my mind and put it back in. Let's put an 18th land in over that. We'll make it the... Uh... Oh, we're at 16 lands right now. Okay, so we'll take out Lovestruck Beast, put in a forest. Call it a day, I think. And these are the Godzilla lands we're getting automatically. All right, so let me pull out one of those. Yep, Drunken Vike, that's the goal. We are going to try and put one of those together, that combo. All right, so we've got a... Uh, how many green sources right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... Castle Garenbrig is probably pretty greedy, actually. Yeah, let's dump that and just put in a land that always comes in play untapped. Nine green. Oh, Evolving Wilds too, right? So ten. Ten green. Blue, we've got one, two, three, four, eight blue sources. Slightly low. But with Evolving Wilds and... We don't really have any basic land search, do we? We have a oh, migration path. Yeah, Evolving Wilds and Migration Path, I want one of each basic here at least. Let's go this. Let's just uh, get right into the games, see how it functions. It's definitely a lot less smooth than the like red aggro deck I drafted first time around in this queue, but I've got some hope.
Doesn't feel like a smooth 7-0 deck, though. I'm sure we're going to get some clunkers and die along the way. I'll be interested to see how Wayward Sword Tooth performs. Might be good, might be awful. Might end up just putting in Lovestruck Beast instead, because Lovestruck Beast can actually block. Yeah, this hand's fine. Obviously, having uh, an untapped land would be... Ultra good, but there's a decent chance I draw one of my first two tries. And if I hit a forest or an island, this hand gets to go turn two Mind Stone, turn three Migration Path, with a bunch of card draw and a Voracious Hydra to back things up. Evolving Wilds. All right, that's perfect. I'm just going to fetch a an island off of this so these other two lands come to play untapped. Obviously, I'll eventually need double green, but we have Migration Path to get that. I just want to make sure these lands are both coming to play untapped. Patch our outside of Cleave. I mean, Cleave is by far the uh, the strongest signal. Um, I guess if you, like, I think all the rest of the cards, like Goblin, Chain Whirler, and Torbran, are just, like, regular creatures in a format where there's plenty of removal. So I wouldn't say that any of those feel like strong signals. Agonizing Remorse is annoying. I feel like they probably take the Migration Path here. Cut me off of easy access to mana. What they take may be indicative of what they've got in hand. They were hovering over stroke there. Gotta say, I like these ramp decks. It always feels like you're putting together a little bit of a puzzle with each game. And it's not nearly as repetitive as playing ramp in actual standard, which is less exciting. All right, just takes the card draw. Not a surprise at all. Mythos is a good one for our opponent not to know about. Could even be a ramp spell in a pinch. Yep, Grooven 1. I definitely know what cards I'm playing on my turns here. Uh, probably don't need to be commenting on a turn-by-turn -turn basis, but yes, Migration Path and Mindstone are excellent magic cards. So let's just get second green and first white. Make everything more castable. And I like where we're at right now. Fire Prophecy can always get rid of something useless. Wayward Sword Tooth looking, well, looking just absolutely awful. <laughs> this card probably actually gets dumped from the deck afterwards. This is not really a, uh, unless you're like really all in on drawing cards and playing lands, Wayward Sword Tooth is probably not where you want to be. So now we've got the awkward question of do I play this or do I just wait? I'm just going to wait. If they play something big, I can stroke it. If they play something small, I can fire prophecy it and get rid of the stupid wayward sword tooth. Yep, ramp. Uh, I think we did a good job of prioritizing ramp highly enough. And then do I just sack the mind stone here? Yeah, I'm pretty down to sack this. I just want to be finding more card draw at this point. Okay, well, Nixplum Ancient isn't exactly that, but eventually it'll be castable. And I think I just keep waiting. No real hurry here. But it does have a Castle Ardenvale and a Field of the Dead. I hadn't really noticed this before. This card will eventually become a concern, but not for... Oh, I could actually Mythos their field, huh? Why don't I just do that? I, only, I have six different kinds of lands here. Oh, wow. It is very tempting to Mythos this Field of the Dead. Chat, I really want to do it. Okay, this is, this is fun. I'm, we're going to do it because it's fun. I don't know if it's good. But it's absolutely incredibly fun. And we get to hold up a Stainful Stroke and Fire Prophecy anyway. Frenzy is in the cube. Swordtooth works well with Frenzy. Citadel is also in the cube. So Swordtooth certainly has a place. I'm just not sure it has a place in our deck right now. Okay, so we got ourselves a little Field of the Dead token over here. If opponent wants to play the zombie game, we can probably play the zombie game just as well, if not better. Ooh, Knight of the Reliquary. That is a good Fire Prophecy target, if I have ever seen one. So opponent's doing, I guess, a five-color lands type thing. But we have the Disdainful Stroke ready to handle whatever their finisher was, which is great. Get a green source, I can play Nixbloom Ancient and still hold up Disdainful Stroke, which is very good. Shark Typhoon, ooh, okay. Not going to play this, probably just going to cycle it to get a 5-5... Five, five. Or actually play Wolf of Haven this turn, right? Hmm. 
One argument is, so I, I still want to hold up to Aimful Stroke. I'm scared of what they have in hand. I want to get a threat down before I uh, tap out. Is it worth it to play Haven here? Probably, I don't, the difference between a 5-5 five, five and a 4-4 four, four Shark is not very significant, and I like having access to Nyx Blue Ancient to do giant Hydras and stuff. Also sets me up for that play I was talking about before, to go Nyx Blue Ancient, hold up, Disdainful Stroke. Playing Shark Typhoon doesn't appeal to me much right now, I don't have many non-creature spells in hand. Alright, opponent's gonna start getting their zombies now. And at some point they're going to have to cast something into Disdainful Stroke, unless they think they can win with Castle Ardenvale. Let's see if that's happening now. Mending of Dominaria. Yeah! Yeah, I gotta counter that. It's just going to give them back Knight of the Reliquary, which is a big pain in the butt. If I draw a land, I can just go Nyx Bloom Ancient into a Shark Typhoon for four anyway. So now we get to see whatever scary thing they were holding that wasn't this, but... That'll be next turn. Next turn is next turn. This turn is this turn. And don't want to cycle Shark Typhoon yet. Now that I have Nyx Bloom Ancient in hand, that doesn't feel especially time sensitive. Might just jam Voracious Hydra here. Just make it a... Like a 12-12? 12-13? Nyx Bloom Ancient can't quite play this and Sphinx of Foresight, which is annoying. I wish I could, but I can't. I could also just hold Shark Typhoon again, cycle it to kill the zombie when it attacks. Hmm, that's tempting too. What are the odds my opponent has to make can deal with a 12-13 creature in their hand? Pretty high, probably. I'll wait. I think if the thing in their hand is a giant planeswalker, I would love to be able to just make a shark and assassinate it. And anything that's not a giant planeswalker, I have Voracious Hydra to clean up if it's like a big creature. So I'm not super worried. Hmm. I was actually supposed to probably make the shark and block that, but I still like holding on in case they have removal here. All right, so now we're cycling Shark Typhoon. Not a question about that. Make a 6-6 six, six shark. Opponent's dead in three to this. And hopefully we get to start making zombies and stuff, or destroying more spells. Wouldn't mind spells or zombies. Chart, of course. All right, let's go with the shark. Blossoming Sands is a zombie. Okay, so is this the turn I go for Nyx Bloom Ancient into Charter Course? I believe it is. I don't think we really need Nyx Bloom Ancient to win the game at this point. It's just like a, a big threat that happens to work well with the Charter Course this turn. If the opponent has a Wrath or something, we've still got Hydroid Crisis and Teferi left in the deck, plus our own Field of the Dead going. Okay, we'll go for Temple of Abandon, make that zombie, get that scry. We've got a Tef, we've got a Krasis, we're pretty much looking for those. Look, it's Tef. Excellent. Feel good about our position here. Not a lot of cards our opponent could have that really turn the game around. Disfigure. Certainly not among them. Ah, the Disfigure in the Ramp Mirror. At least our Fire Prophecy got that stupid Wayward Sword Tooth out of our hand. I do like the way this game is going. I've been happy with the mix of ramp and threats. And draw spells, of course. Eldest Reborn, all right. Not surprised to see something like that. We're going to get rid of Shark here, because Nyx Bloom Ancient is a ridiculous magic card to hold out, hold up on the battlefield. And just, I guess, play our whole hand this turn. So we basically have all the mana we could ever want. It's just a question of how to spend it. Guess we'll start with Tef. Tef draws a card. Okay, and... Gigantic Voracious Hydra that eats a zombie seems like a good play too. Let's see how much mana we get to spend on that. Um, for the sake of argument, let's cast Sphinx of Foresight first, I guess, and then we'll count the mana after that. This is going to be a large Hydra. 
Uh, so seven, sixteen. So we get to make a fourteen, fourteen, and kill the zombie. Seems reasonable. Not bothering to make a twenty-eight, twenty-eight since uh, we're trying to deal as much damage to the opponent now as possible. So even if they kill the Hydra, we still get to kill them next turn with our creatures. So opponent needs like a Wrath effect right now, and they're still facing down a Tef. Eldest Reborn can't get back anything too concerning, and the opponent is dead. Good. Too much math. Tripling is, uh, tripling is hard. <laughs> multiplying by two is hard enough. Multiplying by three is uh, too big-brained for me, a former Nissa player. But yeah, it played out well. Let's see if we can get rid of Wayward Sword Tooth. I hated Wayward Sword Tooth. Goodbye. Um, what do I do instead? Love Struck Beast seems perfectly reasonable. We'll just play Love Struck Beast. Yeah, Sun Exclamation, you can see there, it wasn't super necessary. I think if we had played out those threats a little slower, we'd still have been fine, but it's got enough going on in this deck that I like it. And yeah, I'll keep this. Disdainful Stroke, not exactly an early game card, but Love Struck Beast plus Clothis is good at early game against Aggro. You can get to play Opt. Mm. Given that I have no two drops at the moment, Pretty down to go Island Opt, even if it means I'm going Rootbound Crag next turn. Actually, I'll play Crag this turn. This next turn, I can just go Lovestruck Token into Opt. I'm gonna be curious to see if our opponent's on a blue white Flyers deck. Nope, looks like something else. Of One Mind is gonna be a really good synergy with Lovestruck Beast. If we can pull that off, that'd be cool. And Divination, just drawing three card, or two cards for three mana is not the end of the world in a draft format. The expression on the Kai Avatar is great. Okay, a course is being charted. Is our opponent doing reanimator stuff, I wonder? Is Unbarrow rights in the cube? Hard to say. Yeah, definitely down to get more lands at this point. Okay, what's the play here? So, I could play Lovestruck Beast. I assume Lovestruck Beast is just going to die, or the token will die if I play one of those. But at least that kind of dictates what my opponent's next turn looks like. I could also play Temple of Plenty, Wolf Willow Haven, and the next turn I have five mana, which is enough to do, like, Lovestruck Beast plus Of One Mind. Hmm, let's just get the beast down here. Try to ask a question to our opponent and see how they answer it as a starting point. We don't really have any other ways to turn on Love Stark Beast, so if they kill this token, then beast is shut down, but in that case, beast was still a one for one, so it's not the end of the world. Very nice, JFB, very nice. All right, Lannery Storm, love that. I wonder if our opponent... <laughs> I was thinking about Settle the Wreckage for a second, and like, if our opponent wants to Settle the Wreckage us, they are absolutely welcome to do that. So we're going to drop Lannery Storm because the treasure token gives us up one mind. If the opponent kills something, that's fine. If the opponent kills my token, Lannery Storm still lets me cast up one mind. If they counter Lannery Storm, I'll stack for six, jam Temple, that's fine. Not playing Clothis yet, Groovin. I have a... Uh... Some pressure going at the opponent, so I feel like I may as well make use of that while I can. I'm be curious to see if this is like Divine Arrow or something, or if our opponent's just taking a uh, 8. That's fine, too. So we'll get the Scry on, and then cast of one mine. Still looking for more lands, I think. Although, are we... I guess we're kind of not really looking for more lands as much. I'll bottom that one.
Oh, this is Arjuna? <laughs> I didn't realize this was Arjuna's account. That's very funny. Looks like uh, Arjuna from Arena Craft Podcast, who's interviewed me a couple of times, is sitting across from us. Very curious to see what he's cooked up. And yep, it's a raff. So they got a two for one, but we got a two for one without one mind. That's fine. Problem is Esper decks actually are capable of killing Clothis, which is very annoying. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to play Clothis and hold up Disdainful Stroke. And we will see if they can find a way to stop Clothis that doesn't run into Disdainful Stroke. That is the question I feel like asking right now. Six cards in hand's a lot, but Clothis is not a card that many different cards actually get rid of. Prison Realm, all right. That does work, although we now get to Mythos of Balloon in the Prison Realm, and uh, nope, that doesn't work. I was thinking this was Oblivion Ring, and we could get rid of it with our own thing, which is, oh, oh, Prison Realm doesn't hit Clothis because it's not a creature. If this is Arjuna, I'm absolutely gonna nice Arjuna. Uh, whoops. So I thought that I could copy it and take an enchantment, and he thought he could play it and take a, an enchantment, and, but we were both wrong at the same time. That's very funny. All right, don't need the mana here, so we're just going to start chipping Arjuna down. Oh, boy. Nothing exciting to play, but we've got Clothis. Clothis is going to win the game eventually, and if Arjuna plays something good, we can also have the same thing with Mythos. Or kill it by copying Prison Realm, get our own Scry. Conclave Tribunal, nope. That was another thing that might have gotten rid of Clothis, and I'm going to say no to it. Is Arjuna streaming right now? Obviously, no interest in ghosting. I'm just curious if I'll be able to see this game from the other side at some point. Lava Coil, not that useful, but whatever, we'll just keep chipping away. Nice, well, I'll have to definitely watch this game later. All right, and we'll just make a wolf this turn. Might as well give Arjuna something else to think about. Okay, so how many more things do you have that can actually get rid of Clothis? Cycles Boon, wow, not interested in drawing those four cards. Got to deal with this wolf, Arjuna. You got to deal with this wolf. Driven one, uh, holding on to the Clothis wouldn't, uh, through a board clear wouldn't really have mattered because uh, Clothis does not get killed by board wipes for the same reason she doesn't get killed by Prison Realm. Folio of Fancies. Well, that's a cute card, Arjuna. That's a cute card. And I don't care about it at all. So Lava Coil coming in handy. Pretty much every every Arena Cube deck, even the most controlling, will have some targets for removal spells, so it's good to play them. Polio Fancy has always seemed really slow to me in the uh, sealed version of this cube, and it seems even slower in draft. I don't know about this card at all. The good cards just kill you so fast. Okay, so both us puts Arjuna to one, so Arjuna's got to be able to deal with both of these at the very least. And using a creature probably won't work that well because I can mythos it. And Arjuna's a good sport. The prison round play was definitely rough, but I easily would have... <laughs> had I been in Arjuna's position, I'm sure I would have done exactly the same thing and just expected it to work. It's a really unusual interaction. All right, 2-0 so far with this. Lovestruck Beast worked out pretty well. Happy with that switch. Yes, I'm sure Folio was great during the middle period of Eldraine drafting, but... uh. Even though there are some mill cards in these cubes, I feel like we're just doing faster stuff now. That said, if I do play against a dedicated mill deck, we're probably going to die, since the uh, draw cards and kill you slowly deck does tend to struggle against mill.
Okay, wow. All these, there's mm -hmm. nothing like playing a mana base full of just like janky two color lands and then somehow every hand just comes together. Love what's going on here. Would like more lands, thank you, perfect. Anonymous Gray, what's your draft of Doom? Tell me about that, I'm very curious. So I can now Growth Spiral into Wolf of Haven plus Lannery Storm, unless the opponent has a counter spell of some kind. But if they counter Growth Spiral, it's not the end of the world. What am I looking we for right now? Probably not more lands, Aaron probably card draw would be ideal. I'll bottom this island. Hey, GG's Arjuna. Sorry about the Prison Realm. That was a mistake I absolutely would have made had I been in your shoes as well. So we'll haven up the... Nope, don't want to tap red for that arena. Good try. Get Lannery down, and the great thing about Lannery is even if she dies on the opponent's next turn, that treasure token is still valuable. Of course, she may just die immediately. But hey, it's one less removal spell to be pointed at Voracious Hydra. Nope, get the treasure. Nice. Pow. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Having to cycle a boon of the Wishgiver in your control deck is not good, Arjuna. Not good. Okay, migration path. Darn, I'm like split between cycling this and casting it? Probably cycling it. Opponent really not doing much of anything yet. Which indicates that Disdainful Stroke next turn probably finds a target. Yeah, Bottle Brush, you have a free draft. Everybody in Arena gets one free cube draft. Pretty sweet. Okay, let's just cycle this now. Mythos of Aluna, sure, maybe later. I will say Mythos has not gotten a ton of value for us yet. A lot of our best permanents being legendary is kind of, I'm guessing, part of that. Can't copy Lannery Storm, can't copy Voracious Hydra, because it doesn't get any counters. Thanks, Arjuna. Have fun with your uh, your stipulation draft. <laughs> that sounds challenging. Okay, Mindstone at least cycles. Am I willing to start chipping away at my opponent? I still feel like these treasures will be useful at some point, at the very least to make Hydra bigger, so I don't feel any real need to uh, pump Lannery yet. Gonna not play this Hydra out yet. I really would prefer to use his removal. I'm just going to cycle Mindstone here, actually. If I get a land, I would just want to play it. Okay, Evolving Wilds is nice. Thins out some more lands from me. I have all my colors, so I'm just going to get another island. Slowly navigate our way toward having Tef and Krasis and cards of that nature. I will say an explanation would be really unimpressive here without a really strong follow-up. Oh, it's got Sahili, Okay. Well, I guess I could Mythos that one. Wouldn't be the end of the world. Knight of Autumn can kill a Servo. Is also a decent Mythos target. Mythos being double blue would hurt, except I have infinite treasures, so it doesn't matter that much. Kind of want to cast Hydra now. Hydra's really big. I've got counter magic up. Let's do this. going to jam a large Hydra. It's going to be a 12-13 here. Opponent's got a stroke for the Hydra. I see. I see what that's it. What this is about. Okay. Hydra down. That's fine. We just get to swing with Lannery then. I think I'm going to hit Sahili actually. Okay, so that was a little sad, but we at least got rid of the Disdainful Stroke. That was going to counter something at some point. I've still got my surprise counter spell up. Oh, well, uh, never mind. That, uh, that one doesn't get countered. Okay. Nice Niv Mizzet opponent. Nice Niv Mizzet. Thankfully, I have Mythos for that. Huh. 
The question is, should I be mythosing this thing and just fighting it? Because I otherwise can't kill it? There's an interesting question. I could also mythos it and then just keep it because I've got opt and disdainful stroke. All right, I, I don't know if this is optimal, but I think the deck, the game where both players have a niv mizzet is much more fun than the game where neither player has a niv mizzet. So I'm going to have a niv mizzet here is my current plan. All right, so I'm, I'm going to take one of those. Thanks. I'm um, just going to pay the mana in my pool. So no fighting is happening. Opponent does get their first card here. But then we both, I start getting, I guess we both get cards whenever one of us does something. So this is uh, going to be chaotic. I'm hoping basically that by drawing a lot of cards, I can get to like Hydroid Crisis. Although I admittedly don't have very many ways to kill Niv Mizzet. All right, my Niv Mizzet's down. I am going to hit, do I just hit my opponent? I could hit Sahili. Hmm. Let's actually just attack the opponent. I think with Niv Mizzet, I might just kill them with card draw here. And the servos off Sahili don't bother me that much. I feel like Lannery Storm's not going to live through the next turn anyway. Let's see if my opponent wants to play this out. No blockers. All right. Let's do this then. All right. This is going to be very, very, very chaotic. But I live to uh, I live to entertain you all, Arena. On Arena chat, I live to entertain you all. Okay, pinging the opponent. Don't want that one. Ooh, that's more card draw. That's more card draw. Get pinged. Do I sack more treasures to deal more damage? I want to hold up Disdainful Stroke. I also kind of want to just play Elite Guard Mage post combat, so I'm actually just going to hit them and play Elite Guard Mage and then hold up Disdainful Stroke. That's the plan. Okay. Could have sacked one more treasure. It's fine. We'll find a use for it. Okay. Yep. Come on, opponent. Sink all of your mana into an expensive spell, please. This is going to be one hell of a turn. Anonymous Gray, by the way, sorry I missed you before, but thanks for following the stream. Great to have you here. I may not be much of a stipulation drafter, but I'm absolutely a stipulation player. Make the fun play. Opponent's not trying to kill my creatures this turn. That indicates maybe a wrath of some kind. Interesting. In Bolus's clutches, nope. I said again, the word was nope, and that's game. Opponent's dead this coming turn, I think. Probably, somehow. Oh yeah, of one mind means they're super dead. Disdainful stroke, good card, good magic card. Also, of one mind. Draws two cards for one mana. So nice. So nice. It's honestly, like, way better here than in Ikoria, because you aren't incentivized to uh, only play cards that, what's the word, um, to, like, play all non-humans in your deck or something. So you just, like, naturally get to activate this pretty well. Okay, so of one mind is going to finish the game. There's no, opponent's not getting out of this because we can Knight of Autumn their servo and stop them from blocking with it. Now the opponent has finally realized it's probably time to kill Henry Storm. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Niv Mizzet. Oh yeah. All right, Mythos of Aluna, I had some doubts about it earlier, but boy, howdy did that card deliver. Boy, howdy. Ooh. Did I not own a single Erebos that bleak carded? I, I opened so many Theros packs, I don't understand. All right, well, let's keep rolling. This deck's been super fun. Thanks, Etchenar. That felt, it felt very good. It felt very good to win that.
Yeah, I, I had such high hopes for that card in the Clover sideboard. I said so many big words about it being great for Clover, and then it was just terrible. Not terrible, just not a card that I ever wanted to play in Clover. Okay, fourth land is really good. And I can at least Lava Coil this land of Elves if the opponent doesn't give us a juicier target. Okay, yep, yep, just bolt the bird here. Sphinx of Foresight would have been... would have been better as a card in the opening hand, but we are probably going to use this Migration Path to get two islands anyway, so... it can probably find its way to the battlefield. Firemind Vessel? Why, that... <laughs> opponent, that just curves perfectly in Night of Autumn, look at that. Ah, flexible spells are flexible. I guess we've only really used this to kill artifacts and enchantments so far. That might be saying something about Reclamation Sage being more playable than I thought for this format. Escape the Wilds. Ooh, all right. Pwn's doing super turbo ramp. Escape the Wilds, Lovestruck Beast. I'm being hoisted by my own team or Clover Petard. But Migration Path plus Hydroid Crisis still beats out whatever our opponent's doing here. What are they going to do? Play Nyx Lotus next turn? I guess they can go Goreclaw into Lovestruck Beast. I am definitely attacking with Knight of Autumn. I would love to uh, take out this token if they want to give away the thing that lets them attack with Lovestruck Beast. Yep. Deal. It's a done deal. And if they play only one big threat next turn, Tef just buries them in the ground. And if they pay Goreclaw plus Lovestruck, I can just minus on Goreclaw and they'll need another 1-1. One, one. I guess they have Garen Brig, which actually does guarantee let them play Tusker or Goreclaw stuff here. Maybe with Goreclaw into Tusker? Not quite. All right, that was actually pretty good. So Tef is not safe. Am I just going to Krasis here? Krasis for four. Blocks Goreclaw just fine. Yeah, now just Krasis for four, I think. Opt. Hmm, sure. I could also just play Sphinx of Foresight, which trades with Goreclaw. But I'll just take the two cards. Since if I trade with Goreclaw successfully, we'll love to play Tef next turn. Well, it does have a lot of mana. I'm feeling behind for the first time so far in this league. And raise four runners. Yep, that's good. That's uh, very good. Am I dead? Not yet. So I can block and kill Paradise Druid, which I'm going to do. I'm going to go to six. So Tef can kind of bail me out here for a second. But uh, going to need... Gonna need a little bit of good fortune to figure this one out. Need Disdainful Stroke to stop the Forerunners next time, for example. Um, oh boy. Okay, well. Goodbye, Andres Forerunners. Come back once I have an answer to you, please. Nyx Bloom Ancient. Yeah, I'm down for that, actually. That seems pretty good. It just lets me cast all the spells I might ever draw, which is pretty strong. And do I opt now? Might as well wait on it. So we're almost dead. We are going to two off of Goreclaw. The opponent has another haste threat, we die. Or a 1-1, one, one. we die to Lovestruck Beast. It does not appear that has happened yet, though. Now, are they going to attack me or Tef? Goes after Tef. Sensible. And what's our follow-up today, opponent? Yeah, Bottle Brush, that would be sweet. I would love to see that, too. Helm of the Host. All right, fortunately, they can't do anything with that one yet. Yikes! All right. So that's very scary. Shark Typhoon. Huh. That's very good. That one might just help me get out of this alive. What do I got now? Nine lands, so I can go Ancient. Opponent can go Helm of the Host onto Gore Claw. Hit me with two six five tramplers. Um so I can cast Nyx Bloom Ancient. 
into Sphinx of Foresight and hold up the biggest shark typhoon in the world, except for that I'm going to need to block with Nyx Bloom Ancient so I don't die. I could Shark Typhoon of one mind. That doesn't do anything, really. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to... Ch I'm going to chump with a shark here, huh? This is going to be tough. I think we're probably going to lose. I think we're probably dead. I played the land this turn. Yeah, got an X Bloom. No real, no real way around it. I'm probably going to need Voracious Hydra off the top to do this. I guess I could Sphinx and then Shark. Nah, I just want to draw the card here. Who dat? No, I'm not qualified for that tournament. Okay, so Helm equips. Opponent gets to make a second Gore Claw. Gets to attack me with both Gore Claws. It's gonna hurt. Cycle this thing. Growth Spiral not super helpful. Chump to stay alive, kill the Gore Claw that has the enchantment to tie up a little bit more mana from the opponent. Need, what do I need? Okay, Kiora is at least not gonna kill me immediately. That's something. What do I need? Not an island. Not a chart, of course. A lot of draw, but just can't deal with these big, fat creatures. And I can't even really beat Helm onto Goreclaw here. I think I'm just dead unless I had Voracious Hydra. Ooh, Mythos of Aluna. Does that do it? No. Wait, Mythos lets me copy a Lovestruck Beast and then fight the Goreclaw token? Such that I'm then forced to chump the Forerunners, but I'm not dead? I could also keep Fire Prophecy, but that puts me dead to the Forerunners. Right, there's nothing fancy I can do with Mythos here that somehow... Yeah, so I think I gotta discard Sphinx. Never actually casting this one. Fire Prophecy at least kind of cycles. So I'm gonna copy Lovestruck Beast. Oh, this actually works well. This actually works well. So we actually get to copy Love Struck Beast, fight this thing. And then they play the Forerunners, attack with it. I get to block it, Fire Prophecy it, and go to one. And then there's hope, because I could still draw Voracious Hydra and kill my opponent very quickly with Voracious Hydra. I mean, we're probably dead. They've got, they're going to draw a card off this Forerunners. They've got Helm of the Host, which just makes every creature an enormous threat. So we're very likely to lose, but we're not strictly dead yet. Warclaw was super good for them this game too. Just that mana development it gave them was nasty. Not playing the card in my library, I feel like drawing two cards is better than a random card off the top would be. Hey, Kavartek! Thanks for the raid! Oh dear, the opponent had a creature. We're in a lot of trouble. I can't play Stomping Ground. That is also bad. I do not want to tap out of white mana arena. Please do not tap me out of white mana today. Ouch. Alright, Disdainful Stroke doesn't do it. We're dead. Needed that one earlier. Alright, so, took my first loss in this format after 10 game wins, but uh, opponent had a cool ramp deck, they deserved it. And Race Forerunners certainly got us good. And let's move on to the next one. To all those viewing from Chris Kavartik's stream, hello! I'm Aaron Gertler, I uh, am known mostly for building Teamer Adventures and helping to bring that deck to prominence. Um, I've also done a lot of other brewing in my time. I love Cube, so I'm playing some Arena Cube right now, and we've drafted a sweet four-color ramp deck. Okay, so Temple versus Evolving Wilds. I'll go Evolving Wilds. Definitely the thing I've noted so far is the removal has really been paying dividends even against decks where removal normally wouldn't be good. Starfield Mystic. Do I lava coil that? 
I guess so. Otherwise, I'm not doing anything with a mana this turn, so... We'll coil it. Next turn, we get to uh, play the tap land, hold a disdainful stroke for a 4-drop. Oh, Drunken Vike, I would never fight you. You are, you are correct. Rampaging Ferocidon's annoying. That one's going to deal me a lot of damage. But Mythos of Luna can take care of it eventually. I don't really want Growth Spiral at the moment. And I hope my opponent goes for a 4-drop I can stroke. JFB, I don't know what you would want to wish for Karn for. I think it could be a fine card to play in flex slots, but I think if you're wishing for Karn to, like, get something else, that just feels, like, really, really slow. And turning off all the Witch's Ovens doesn't seem worth it. Maybe if there's a, a better activated ability artifact deck at some point, it'd be better. I don't know. All right, so Migration Path, get Forest Island. Ideally, the opponent plays another big creature next turn so I can Mythos it and fight the Ferocidon. That's true, I suppose, Kevlar Man. I just don't know. Oop. All right, Experimental Frenzy. That one I can Knight of Autumn, so that's fine. Do I just kill other stuff this turn? Very tempted just to kill other stuff this turn by copying this Ferocidon and then Knight of Autuming down the Frenzy. I think I'm going to do that, actually. Okay. Mana has been great so far, so big credit to the Mana. Yeah, no, I don't think Karn is very good. I have not been impressed with that card in Standard any time I've ever seen it in any deck during all of its lifespan here. All right, History of Benalia, that's fine. All Sea of Life's Bounty, also fine. Shark Typhoon looking real, real hot. Love this card every time I've seen it. Opponent's probably confused about this attack. Um, Gato, the Shuffler is completely random in best of three, so if you're used to seeing best of three, it's completely random there. In Cube Draft, it's not completely random because this is best of one, so it works the same way it does in best of one formats at all times and all places, that is giving you a slightly better chance of having a reasonable number of lands in your hand. And if you think magic is better when you get to do that, then yes, I agree, magic is, is better there. Oops, Pitful Control mistakenly. Resolve that. Fire Prophecy, Sphinx of Foresight, okay. Okay, I like what this is, what's going on here. I guess I'm just going to play Sphinx this turn and save the Sharks for when the Sharks are bigger. Ooh, Kevlar Man, no. Four Cinder Vines is too many Cinder Vines. Also, Reclamation can easily beat you even without Reclamation. Wow, all right. Opponent's going to take my Charter Course? Oh, they're taking my Lava Coil. That hurts, that hurts. Opponent. Opponent. That hurts. Stop it. Ah, oh, this card is often bad, but when it's good, it's really good. Dire Fleet Daredevil. All right, Temple of Abandon I would like to put back into my deck. What am I killing? Am I killing a Knight, or am I killing the Alciad? Yes, I'm just killing a Knight with this. Captain Lannery Storm, not doing a lot for us right now. Just going to hold out, hold this knight back to block, use Shark Typhoon. It's an interesting one we're playing. Definitely a game that could go either way right now. Shark Typhoon is just a great card, Groovin. I'm, I'm certain it's one of the better first picks you can get in this cube. Captain Lannery Storm, on the other hand, not looking super impressive right now, but has been good in some past games. I like Opt. Really just looking for Voracious Hydra and Hydroid Crisis here. See if the opponent wants to give up Alcia to save the Daredevil or if they have a burn spell. Okay, so they got some value out of the Slaying Fire there, but still a two for one. Yeah, Bottle Brush, I don't know about Clothis, but I think Clothis is at least a lot better than uh, Cinder Vines. There we go. There's, there's my big boy. All right, all right. Game's still not over, but now this is a good turn. Hachinar, I have, a, I have a top five from Cube Sealed. In fact, you can go back to my Twitter and probably find my tweet storm from uh, 
whenever Cube Sealed was going on and what I thought the best cards were in that format. In draft, obviously, things are a little different. Um, my top five is probably something like Ember Cleave. Um, ooh, Pacifism, ouch. Ember Cleave's obviously great. Um, Pro Hydra Crisis might be up there, honestly. Hydra Crisis is pretty sick. Okay, it's going to block the Knight. If they decide to sack Alcyad to protect it, we at least uh, don't take damage off the Alcyad here. We're doing pretty well for the opponent having a 4-lander here. Okay, so we've got Hydra, we've got Guard Mage. Um, uh, do I just want to play a big Hydra this turn? Do I want to go, like, Guard Mage, Land Restore? I'm going to go Guard Mage, Land Restore here. That just, like, deals with everything my opponent has right now. And it lets me save uh, Hydra in case they play some large creature later that I need to kill, like a big flyer. Yeah, Golos is probably pretty good. Um, good to go Tef here. Opponent does not have a lot of power on board. All right, yeah, I'm going to go Tef here. I wouldn't call it great. I don't think I'd put Golos in my top five. Liliana might be there somewhere. Worth noting, I can also put my own Hydra Crisis back into my deck at some point if I want to cast it again and get that Pacifism off. But for now, I'm perfectly happy just to be drawing cards. Uh, I mean, Colors Flexibility is a real thing, Drunken Vikey. I think Karn might be one of the top five cards for that reason. I don't know if... I think Golos is weaker than Karn, but... If you don't build around it. But, I mean, Golos is certainly strong. I wouldn't deny that at all. Okay, so we've got how much mana now? Four, six, eleven? So that's an Explosive Ancient plus, plus whatever we want at this point, basically. Alright, still going to draw off Tef rather than putting the Krasis back in my deck for now. Gotta keep a little bit of an eye on the life total with this Devil's Play in the graveyard. Rootbound Crag's great, though. Let me just go Nyx Bloom. Into Lannery Storm, into Of One Mind, into a Giant Hydra. Okay, we only have eight cards left in the deck after doing this, but I think this is probably gonna do it, especially with Tef. Okay, I can also just play Golos and then play the biggest Hydra in the world next turn. That's pretty tempting. Let me play Golos. I forget if I have any life gain lands left. Let's just see what's left in the library so I can kind of plan this out. We've got Lovestruck Beast, and oh, Clothis has some life gain attached to it, so I'll get Temple of Abandon. See if Temple helps me do Clothis here. Yep, keep that one right on top, and uh, I'm just play Hydra. Playing Hydra doesn't seem necessary. I'll just save that to kill my opponent, guaranteed, um, a turn from now, I think. Uh, or do I? This is... Larry Stormer hits for three. Oh, what I can do here is actually... I keep forgetting the explanation triples mana. So, Lannery Storm actually generates a Black Lotus here, which means I get to play a very big Hydra, which is, I think, going to be good enough. Okay, so that's seven, and that's, yeah, it's super lethal next turn. Not quite lethal, actually, but close enough. All right, cool. Four color control, rolling on through. Shark Typhoon, just super good. Nixplan Ancient has impressed, has impressed. Night of Autumn's also been great, just shutting stuff down continuously. Yep, Orange Pulps had the had the option to yeah tuck the pacifism that that uh that's a good point so that subsequent turn I would have been able to kill my opponent um by tucking the pacifism possibly. All right, this is great. I feel like I'm getting exactly enough games with this deck before I'm slightly tired of it, and then we'll get to draft something else. Uh. 
uh, yeah, in for this hand. Voracious Hydra for two on turn three. Cleans up aggro, starts pretty well. Having a potential turn four Tef is great. Nyx Bloom Ancient, not its best in the opening hand, but I'm not going to complain. Okay, Disdainful Stroke is okay. All right, so real question. I mean, not really a question. I'm not playing Hydra yet, so I'm just going to play Temple. Knight of Autumn. Ah! Uh, with Nyxbloom Ancient in hand, I think I just want lands more than I want Knight of Autumn here. Next turn, I get to play Tef, untap some lands, hold up Disdainful Stroke if my opponent does anything besides hold up Counter Magic. And the question is now, though, am I too scared to go for Tef? I believe the answer is yes. Tef just getting countered feels really bad. I could jam a Hydra. Could jam a Hydra. Do I want to jam a Hydra? Just like a 6 7 here. Now I've got Disdainful Stroke up. We'll wait. We might get to stroke something and play Tef. Case in point. Now, Tef probably doesn't get through this next turn intact. Opponent could have Eldest Reborn, opponent could have all sorts of things, but starting out with some card draw here is good. Let's see what the opponent's follow-up is. Could be Murderous Rider. Any number of things that can take out a Tef. But it's not any of those. It's Spawn of Mayhem, which means our opponent's probably just dead. They couldn't take out Tef this turn. Odds are they probably can't take it out next turn. I could play Nyx Blue Ancient, but I'm just going to keep drawing cards off of Tef. Jam this at X equals 5. Fight the spawn. Gracious Hydra, just excellent. An excellent magic card. Opponent's just done. All right. Yeah, Tef Hero of Dominaria could be in the top 5. <laughs> that card is very demoralizing. Yep, 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 yep. Love this. Oh yeah, Nordic Rest. I don't blame the opponent for scooping there at all. At all. So we've got plenty of mana and cards and stuff. Just looking for big things to cast. Mindstone versus Growth Spiral. Oh! Technically, Growth Spiral is a little bit better for having colored mana after L. I'll just play Growth Spiral. Wait till my opponent's upkeep, I think, in case they have Spell Pierce. Doesn't really matter much otherwise. Shark Typhoon, you'll love to see it. Sahili, okay. I'm almost tempted to Mythos this, but I can also just play Mindstone and have Golos available next turn, potentially, so I don't think I care about those Healy tokens that much. I can also play a 4-5 Voracious Hydra this turn. 4-5 Voracious Hydra chews through Sahili pretty fast if the opponent can't kill it, and the opponent's blue-red. So odds are they probably can't kill it, but they could bounce it. There's Silent Departure and Brazen Borrower in this cube. I could also Mythos an opponent's land. That's, could Mythos their temple get a scry get goals for sure next turn? Just go up on mana a little bit, which isn't 
a bad thing either. So many different tempting plays. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Do not know whether that was right or not. Elite Guard Mage. I'm actually going to bottom that. If I draw a land next turn, I can go Mind Stone into Golos. Okay, opponent potentially holding up Counter Magic here, but that's fine. We've got Shark Typhoon and a lot of threats in hand. <laughs> Just Mythos the Niv in a few turns. Not a bad idea, Harmless G, but I do have Racious Hydra for Niv. Okay, so opponent gets their first uh, counter down. That's fine. Migration Path is not a card I mind getting countered here. Oh, Sea Dasher Octopus is here. Okay, okay, that's cute. That is very cute, but I do have a bunch of ways to kill it. So it's going to get one card, but Lava Coil... I'm guessing my opponent can't stop Lava Coil and Voracious Hydra this coming turn. Famous last words. Let's start with Lava Coil. Okay, it died, so now what do I do? It is Golos. Golos probably gets countered. Would I rather Golos get countered or Hydra get countered? I'm honestly down for Golos here. I don't need a white mana that badly. I could also cycle Shark Typhoon for three. Let's just keep exhausting the opponent's counter magic supply. Nope, Golos resolves, meaning I got a white temple. Excellent. It would be nice to have a Field of the Dead in this deck somewhere. Okay, pretty happy with how this is going. If the opponent has Niv, we just Hydra it down. Most things can just get Hydra down. Golos is actually a pretty good attacker into Sahelia and other potential Planeswalkers. Dragon Master Outcast. Okay, opponent doesn't have the lands for that yet, and it does get eaten by Hydra. That's good. Um, do I go after it now? Let's see. Yeah, Void Beyond Void. First cube draft is free. Uh, kind of in for just making a giant shark here. Kind of down to go for giant shark. I'm glad they didn't have chemistry's in sight. Okay. Ooh, all right. Opponents decided to do this. That's... That might be pretty good. We'll see. We'll see if this is fast enough. I do have Knight of Autumn. Okay, opponent's not going to attack. They're slightly too suspicious. I don't blame them. All right, it's a shark fight. Shark fight. I've got Knight of Autumn in my deck somewhere. I already use Mythos of Aluna, so I can't copy their Shark Typhoon. But I like where we're going with this here. So we get to... Start with Love One Mind. Play Temple. This turn I'm just going to Fire Prophecy, get rid of the Outcast. We're going to save Hydra to kill a very big Shark later, I think. I'm just going to kill Sahili now. Burn this thing to the ground. Get this 10th land out. Hydroid Crisis is pretty good, and here's Clothis. All right, so it's the velocity of the ramp deck against the answers of the blue-red deck. We know how this battle has gone in standard for the last two years. Let's see if it plays out the same way in Arena Cube. Now, if the opponent has Mythos for their own Shark Typhoon, at that point, we start to sweat, chat. At that point, we start to sweat. But I'm guessing they can't do much about Clothis. And these Hydras are very big for a blue-red deck to handle. Very big. Ooh. Okay. 6-6 six, six Shark. Equal sizing of Sharks here. 
Gonna just get this Devil's Play right out the graveyard. No flashback for you, buddy. Devil's Play Shark Typhoon's really good when you don't have a Clothis up against you. I don't really have it in many other discard outlets. I'm just going to play this out. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, I can go QQ. Let's try it. Oh my goodness, that's my first time we're using QQ. It's so cool. All right, play a big, a big Hydra. Eat this shark. Beat SMTG. I am not qualified for the player's tour, so I will be playing none of them. Which is fine. I like Arena Cube a lot anyway. And the expected value for the... Player store is not especially high. Got plenty of time to practice for my Mythic Invitational in August. Yeah, Drunken Vike. If we're like five men without cycling, that would be really fun. I was worried about a bounce spell taking out my shark, but Voracious Hydra is a tougher nut to crack. Probably the best card they could have here would be Entrancing Melody, but they don't have Entrancing Melody, which I am very grateful for. This is not a top five card in the queue, but it's a very good first pick. Bone Crusher is just a heck of a magic card in Limited. Okay, gonna get my attacks in before I play the Crisis. See how my opponent reacts to these. Wow, scoops before even seeing the Crisis. I'll take it, I'll take it, that's good. So, what's that, five wins or six? I've not really been keeping track, but having too much fun. Six wins, all right, one more. Let's do it. This deck has been super smooth. Loved how good the mana has been. This is like, that's why you take lands, folks. Take lands early, take lands often. Have all the smooth mana, play all the spells when you want to. Oh, Ashenar, if my opponent's 6-1, that makes me the final boss. That makes me the final boss. Yep, I've had uh, Clothis, I think, is the only card. I've had Clothis and Fire Prophecy in both of my decks so far, and uh, both are good. Bottle Brush, now, I mean, my first deck, you can see my first deck on my Twitter was just red green monsters with Ember Cleave. Okay, only two colors, so three colors of the Volume Wilds. This, this looks good. All the, all the hands in this deck look great. First couple turns of fetching are a little awkward, but I imagine we'll get time. Oh, island. Never mind, that's fine. So, are we just doing this? Or are we doing Temple of Mystery? I don't need to play Opt on turn one, especially. Um, Red Source, do I keep that? Uh, I'll keep the Red Source and I can Evolving Wilds for white. Actually, I'm gonna bottom that. I've got a lot of kind of air in this hand right now. I would like to find some substantial spells. Okay, Disdainful Stroke's not bad either. Gonna go for Mind Stone over Wolf Willow Haven. Probably actually was better to go for Haven there, since if it gets countered, Mind Stone's actually a slightly better card. Okay, so I can go Haven now, hold up Disdainful Stroke. Seems good. We'll see if this resolves. If it does resolve, I'll just play Evolving Wilds. If it doesn't resolve, I'll play Hinterland Harbor, so I can still hold up Stroke. Opponent's really thinking about it. Do you counter the ramp? It's kind of like bolting the birds. Okay, opponent is going to counter the ramp. I see you, opponent. Memory leak? Oh, man. Okay, can't disdainful stroke.
I do just have beast plus token next turn if I want that. Okay, opponent's going to take stroke. So opponent's got something fancy they want to do. <laughs> That's pretty good, JFP. I had a bottom this fire prophecy. I don't see any uh, small creatures from my opponent right now. Ooh, of one mind is. Spy Ooh. Oh, man, this comes to play tapped. Oh, otherwise I go love Star Peace token of one mind to all of them the same turn. That would be sick. Alright, I'll go Heart's Desire. Love Stroke Beast, and uh Not super interested in shuffling that fire prophecy back into my deck, so I'll play Rootbound Crag for now. Opponent looking to be four color control over there. Interesting. If they don't have removal, we get a great turn with Of One Mind next turn. If they do have removal, love struck at least one for one to them. Ooh, my one one. <laughs> no. I mean, that's fine. This, as far as uses for this card, that is a perfectly acceptable use. And Drew Plains. Hmm. All right. Wheel, 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 wheel. I guess I should hold up Mindstone technically in case I want to. Uh... Mm, nah, I'm not going to sack Mindstone this turn, I'm pretty sure. Let's just do this. This, hold up some colors. Chart, of course. Oh man, I can't even attack right now. That's so sad. That's so sad. Guess I'm just dumping Evolving Wilds because I kind of have all my colors now. It does thin the deck a little bit. I could dump Sulphur Falls. Alright, we'll keep... But it thins the deck because we need Fire Prophecy back. But Fire Prophecy also cycles, kind of. Alright, I'll dump... Sulphur Falls. Play Evolving Wilds. Use it to grab something. Mountain, sure. Okay, so we got Lava Coil for some creatures. They do have kind of an uninterrupted window to jam a good 6-drop, but that is not what happened, fortunately. Let's try Captain Lannery Storm. That one worked. Okay. Some choice about whether we're going to cycle Migration Path or just cast Migration Path. I think casting it, thinning out two lands from the deck, or possibly eating a counter spell from the opponent, that all seems good. I've got Hydroid Crisis in here somewhere. I suppose I could Mythos the token, yes, Nordicrest. Missed that line before. Opponent didn't have anything last turn. Did they have anything this turn? Ethereal Absolution. All right, well... Fortunately, we have an extremely clean answer to that in the form of Mythos of Iluna. <laughs> oh, wait, this is going to be great, actually. Wait, Lovestruck Beast can attack now, chat. Lovestruck Beast can attack now. You need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Is, it, is Ulamog in the cube? Hey, X, bad, bad game or X, thanks for the follows. I'm probably not supposed to pronounce the X's. Sorry. Um, all right, so we're going to attack with Lovestruck Beast because our opponent let us do it, which is sweet. Pow. And then I guess I'm going to make an Ethereal Absolution, and then I'm going to bounce their Ethereal Absolution? That all sounds pretty good. I want one, thanks. Um, why is it having me pay with the treasure? Actually, I think I do want to pay with the treasure so I can untap and have the card draw off of Mindstone, probably? 
No, that's... Whoops. Oh, no, chat. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I did not mean to click on that treasure. Well, that's deeply unfortunate. All right, I'm guessing I'm sacking Mindstone now. Jeez, chat. Uh, somebody pump me for that. That was ugly. Oh, we drew another white spell. Perfect. <laughs> no, that was so bad. I had the white off the treasure. I just didn't... Uh... Well, we'll see if the opponent kills my Ethereal Absolution copy here. They do get to make a token, which is annoying, because it makes Tef a lot have a harder time actually surviving. But if they spend four mana on that, I'm still kind of okay with it. Ugh. All right, all right. We're just making things a little bit more interesting before the big showdown. I do love the balanced Ethereal Absolutions, keeping all the creatures the same size they were before. And I love Landry Storm generating white mana, too. That's going to let me double spell this turn. Which is super cool. Opponent could exile a creature and ambush her, except are there any creatures? There are no creatures to actually exile with Ethereal Absolution right now. That's cool. Okay, let's go with Elite Guard Mage first, see if this uh, one gets countered before we try and get Tef down. Oh yeah, Drunken Vike, the Real Absolution is, uh, was completely absurd in that format. Alright, got the stroke out of their hand, you'll love to see it. Let's see if they got another one for Tef. But now seeing this is like, why did they do what they did last turn? <laughs> what was that last turn about? Okay, so we're going to bounce the Absolution to wipe out the token here. Since only my Absolution it remains. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And a Hydra on top, perfect. Oh, okay, well, uh... Alright, Dream Eater's pretty good. Dream Eater's pretty good. That is going to eat my Tef, but then I get to eat the Dream Eater. So, I can, I can roll with this. This is fine. Surveils uh, spawn on a land. They're just, I guess, putting Ethereal... Oh! No, my Ethereal Absolution, chat! Oh, no, now they get it back? Alright. Game on. This is going to be interesting. They do take a lot of damage off of Lannery plus Lovestruck, though. They don't have a lot of time to mess around. They do have a token off of this because there's a spawn of mayhem in the graveyard. Um, so I think we just do this. Boil you down. Oh! Oh no, Voracious Hydra doesn't work with Ethereal Absolution on the field. It doesn't work. <laughs> That's terrible. Because it's an O one when it comes in and it never gets its ability. Alright, so I need Knight of Autumn like stat, or I'm going to lose. Jeez, that Dream Eater was rough. So rough. Alright, so I can't play Hydra yet. I need to wait until I draw Knight of Autumn or something. Oof. Oh no. I think we're going to be 6-2 and two chat. That was a real good rip. Hydra works fine, you're saying, Kevlar Man? Oh wait, it does. It does. It does. I'm an idiot. It does. I'm an idiot. Okay. I'm an idiot. Can still win, though. Can still win. Oh, Knight of Autumn. Alright, Knight of Autumn's good, though. Knight of Autumn's very good. Um, so I'm just going to kill Absolution and then play a big Hydra, I think. We got plenty of mana for this. Yeah, got to kill this before they start making tokens off it. I just wanted more counters, yeah. Okay, goodbye Absolution. Play a very big Hydra. This is going to be for 5 with the treasure. Doubles to 10. Opponent needs a removal spell right off the top to get me here. Oof, alright, so... Couple punts this game. We'll see if we get punished for it. Zombie doesn't do it. A big toughness creature would do it. What'd you rip, opponent? What'd you rip? Was it a land? Oh, we didn't deserve that chat, but we got it anyway. Got there anyway. 
Hey, Tiki Rev, well, thanks for repping Teamer Adventures, even if it's not the best position it's ever been. Okay, that was sweet. Didn't deserve it, but it was really sweet. And now we get to draft again. Oh, yeah. That was a really fun league. Just every game is so different in Cube. That's what's great. You just never play the same game twice. You get all these weird interactions. Like Dream Eater bouncing an Ethereal Absolution token from Mythos of Aluna. Has that ever happened in a game of Magic on Arena before? Who knows? This is also y'all's chance to get in the queue if you want to draft with me. That game was an adventure. Yes. Uh, oh, what a great format. Okay, so nothing in particular I'm looking to draft here. We'll see where the packs take us. Oh, wow. A lot of heavy hitters in this one. We've got uh, three of the more interesting first picks you can grab. Mirari's Wake, Tef, and Liliana all together here. I think Tef is overall the strongest card here, but all three of these are perfectly reasonable first picks. Other stuff, Growth Spiral is obviously kind of fine, and the Blue Green Ramp decks that you're playing, Cloud Concealer is just like a nice smooth card. Um, huh. Where am I going with this? Hmm. Let's take Wake. I want to try Wake out. I have not gotten to play this card in Arena ever. Oh, wow. And Finale of Glory? We've got our combo. We've got our combo. I mean, do I risk this not wheeling? I could take, I could take Paradise Druid. Paradise Druid's responsible choice, but we're... All right, we found our thing we're doing. We found our thing we're doing. It's Green White Ramp. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Okay, Kiora looking pretty good here. Ooh, Relentless Pursuit. It finds creatures, not enchantments. That doesn't actually work with Wake. Could just grab Kiora, could grab Plain Wide Celebration, but I would not be surprised if this wield. Heliod's cute, I'm just going to take Kiora. Pizza Party Time, the best legal planes of Arena is probably Tef 3. Tef 5 is, is probably up there somewhere. Yeah, it's just Kiora, right? It's not Savai Trium. I mean, this is going to be a fun multicolor type deck. But I'll just grab, I'll just grab Kiora here over Secluded Step. See what we wheel later. All right. Um, huh. Enchantress's presence is fun. I do want to try the Enchantress archetype in this cube at some point, but I think I like just a cycle land that makes several colors. Um, Shepherd of the Flock is a card that I'm very fond of. Seraph of the Scale is actually probably pretty strong in this cube, since it doesn't get bounced by Tef every time it comes down. But ooh, Dream Eater also nice with QRL. I'll just take the Triome. When in doubt, take lands. Okay. Couple cool choices here. We got Mothra. Love this card. Does not really fit a ramp Kiora deck very much. Probably just gonna take Ugin. And Dotha Triome also tempting because of multi land. JFBA. I don't actually know if March is in this. I think it is, but I don't know. Triome Ugin. Triome Ugin. Triome Ugin. I'll go Triome. I, I like the idea of just having a lot of different options, a lot of colors I can play. I love just, like, janky infinite color decks. I will confess to that. Ooh, Stetson Champion. Champion, Escape to the Wilds. Um, Escape's cute. I want to take Champion. I want to try it. Maybe you can do a little enchantment sub-theme here. I don't know what I'm doing. This deck's probably going to be much worse than the last... Oh, Shark Ty... Shark Typhoon 7th? Have some respect. Have some respect, Magic Arena. What are you doing? What are you doing? Respect. Oh my god. Yeah, I think Ugin's probably just okay, Achenar. Probably just okay. D-Spark is pretty good if we're sure we're playing black. It's like a disdainful stroke that happens after the fact. Uh, Roar of the Worm doesn't really do anything. Thirst for Meaning is a cool enchantment-based card. Ancestral Blade, I'm not sure why that's here. I'll grab Thirst here, I think. Okay, Baffling End is cute with enchantments. Cloud here is nice as easy growth spiral. All right, looks like we're doing the same deck again accidentally, which is fine. This is just opt over. I don't know if we're playing red. Woodland Champion doesn't do much. Also, no idea whether we're playing Satessin Champion, since we don't really want to cast Shark Typhoon. But we'll see. Yes, I would like to wheel Reclamation very much, TKO. Would really love to wheel Reclamation here. To go with Shark Typhoon and other stuff. 
All right, Savai Triome is a black-white dual land for us. Relentless Pursuit. Probably not going to have a creature targets to be good. Secluded Step. Cycle lands are nice, too. I'll take the third Triome, though. It's also a Cycle Land. Love, 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 love to Wheel Reclamation, but I don't think we're going to. It would have to be, like, 14th pick or something. I feel like there are probably enough people who are just, like, when in doubt, take the card that's playable in Standard when they don't know what to do in Cube. So, sky's the limit as far as what our mana can do, which is nice. Okay, ooh, all right, a couple good options here. Shepherd of the Flock, Dream Eater, Shepherd of the Flock, Dream Eater, Shepherd of the Flock, Dream Eater. Um, I think when in doubt, I'm just going to take the cheaper card. I do think Dream Eater's cool. All right, Emery, we're probably not going to play it, but it has the most potential to do something in our deck. We get, like, some Mind Stones and Guild Globes and whatnot. All right, this is the moment of truth. Are we going to get Reclamation back? We did not. We did not. That's okay. Disdainful Stroke, 15th. Whatever. This is day one of Cube, folks. Day one of Cube. You heard it here first. Uh, Charming Prince, love this card, but there's no Yorian in the Cube, sadly. Um... Biogenic Ooze is nuts with Marari's Wake, of course. Thassa's Intervention looks great. Nadir Kraken looks great. Uh, well, good. Not great. But I'm just going to take Temple Garden. Am I just going to take Temple Garden? Karanika is not going to be played in this deck. Yeah, yeah, it's just... I'm just going to be boring and take Temple Garden here. Get your mana good, chat. Get your mana good. Clothis. Okay, Clothis is an enchantment. We don't have the tools to splash her right now, but maybe someday? I mean, for now I'm taking Temple of Enlightenment. Um, hopefully we can wheel Clothis or Lyra. This is a deck that would happily splash Clothis, I think. Just play the same deck again. Uh, March of Multitudes is here. That's one I'd be happy to see, too. What else would be good? Wolf Willow Haven, Omen of the Hunt, Omen of the Sun, anything that works with the Tessin Champion would be cute. Although, not playing Tessin Champion is not the end of the world either. Ooh. If we could wield Divine Visitation, that could lead to some interesting places. For now, I think I'm just taking Great Shark. It's good with Kiora, just in general, fine with Shark Typhoon type stuff, and holding up Disdainful Stroke and Thirst Feeding and Growth Spiral. Got a lot of instants, is what I'm trying to say. Scattering Surveyor is not horrible, but I'm going to take Great Shark for now. Maybe wheel that Divine Visitation. Uh, wow, okay. We're kind of getting cut off of our colors a little bit. Knive, if you're not playing black, is pretty bad. And even if we were playing black, it'd be pretty bad for us because we have no creatures, really. The Circle of Loyalty uh, doesn't do much for us. Splendor Mare? Am I taking fourth pick Splendor Mare? Riel the Everwise is good with Thirst for Meaning and Shark Typhoon? Maybe I just take Riel. I've already got two red producing lands, actually. I'll take Riel. Yep, yeah, Achenar, that's exactly right. You can get ooze level cards pretty much pretty late, and you just want to get the fixing so that when those come along, you know what you want and can and can slot them in. Ooze would have been a horrible pick one. Just uh, wasn't necessary, I don't think. Okay, easy Tristani. Ooh, Gilded Lotus. Gilded Lotus is absurd. Um, taking that one over Tezzeret pretty easily, I think. Yep. Gilded Lotus, very, very, very good cube card. Just making a lot of mana is valuable. The fact that it comes in and can, like, protect itself by tapping for Disdainful Stroke is great. Here we've got Wolf Willow Haven. Easy to take the cheap ramp spell. That also works with Satessin Champion. Um, this pack's interesting. I guess we're not really playing black, so Godless Shrine doesn't hold much appeal. Gilded Goose isn't outstanding if it's just sitting by itself with no synergy, but it's fine. Mana plus life gain. Firemind Vessel, I think, is just, like, one too many clunky ramp spells. When in doubt, I like taking the cheaper card. Maybe Firemind Vessel was correct. Ah, uh, Drunken Vike. No, 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 no. Lotus Field is, a uh... Lotus Field is slow, slow, slow. 
Could have been fun. I forget we took over Lotus Field, but I'm not going to rely on getting that particular two-card combo together. All right. Wheeled a couple things I was interested in. Charming Prince doesn't really... It's good with Tristani exactly, but it has no real synergy in our deck otherwise. Thoughts Intervention's a bit heavy on the blue, but it's just such a powerful card. Would be nice to get some more early defense going. That's since I was taking Merfolk Trickster. There's also Ionize if I do end up playing red. Man, I've been seeing black cards this whole time. I'm actually just going to take Watery Grave, because you may end up splashing black. Because I feel like it's really open. All right. Oh, wow. Moment of Truth. All right. We got Divine Visitation. Divine Visitation works with Tristani, Shark Typhoon, Finale of Glory, Wolf Willow Haven, technically. Uh, we don't have Castle Ardenvale, and I believe we already passed Castle Ardenvale. All right, let's take Atris. Just take... Oop. Okay, I think I clicked something that was not Atris there by mistake. Now I'm taking Splendor Mirror. What did I click? Oh, I clicked Castle Embrith. Never mind. Darn it. <laughs> wanted that Atris. Okay, so I don't know if we're playing Riel yet. Splendor Mirror is nice with Riel. Get Lifelink on her, get a little bit more stuff going. Daxos is technically an enchantment creature that also plays early defense. Probably not doing that, but there are worse ways to hedge. Did not, yeah. So Colothis isn't happening. Serenity Singer we're probably not playing, but again, works against aggro. What am I looking for right now in this deck? Sahili, probably not. Darn, I should have remembered Sahili. I guess her coming around 15th was me. you couldn't have guessed ahead of time, but Sahili is very good with Divine Visitation, of course. So, all right, Bertha Miletus. It's, like, not powerful, but it's kind of everything I want to be doing. It's an enchantment that triggers a Destin Champion. Gets me lands, gets me early defense. Um, might wheel, but I haven't been seeing a lot of white cards wheeling. Golden Egg gives me some synergy with Emery, which is still sitting in here. But not enough synergy to make it worth playing Emery. I think I'll take Birth and probably just hope we wheel Deputy here. Or Kogla. Yeah, we got plenty of late game. We don't really need the Kogla. Oh, Questing Beast. Hello. Oh, and Archon. We probably wheel Archon. I'm going to take Questing Beast. Questing Beast is... Just a ridiculously powerful threat. It just kills so many Planeswalkers. Incidentally, it's great with Kiora, all of that. Ooh. Oh, wow. This pack is loaded. We got Glacial Fortress, if we just want to take a card that works with our mana base. We've also got Eldest Reborn, which is bonkers. Ethereal Absolution, which is bonkers. I think I'm actually not playing Riel. I, would, I am more interested now in trying to splash black, I think, for Absolution or Eldest Reborn, but there's also a Migration Path. Holy cow. So much stuff. Um, hmm, I've got four or five drops already. Darn. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to take Fortress. I'm going to take Fortress. We're not necessarily splashing. Hydrate Crisis, easy. What else is in this pack before I go? Dawn of Hope we might play if it comes back. Same with Dryad, Green Seeker, Charter Course, Evolving Wild. But that's an easy crisis. Nobody's taken the blue-green ramp cards, so that's something. Um, breeding Pool, yep. So notably, Guild Globe and Golden Egg did come around. So we could have done fun Emery stuff if we wanted to. Emery is a card that you can probably build around well in this cube. Ranger Vio says no targets. March versus Thassa. Okay, we have no actual Thassa synergy at all. Like, none. Right? Yeah, we have no Thassa synergy, so it's easy March. Time wipe looking pretty good. Yep. Destiny Spinner, Rex Sage, Maelstrom Pulse, Seal Away, follow, Folio, all may be playable, but I think it's just Time Wipe. All right, so if we had taken Divine Visitation, we would have picked up a lot of stuff that works with it. Oh, wow. Even now, we're getting so many great cards. Mindstone, Omen, and Golos, all in this pack together. I keep thinking things like Omen works with Stetson Champion, but we only have one Stetson Champion. Might just be my. I'm gonna take Omen here. I like that Omen has Flash. I like that it triggers the Destin Champion. I like the Scry later. Okay, Deputy came back, as did Golden Egg. We're not gonna really need to do Emery things, so I'm just gonna take Deputy. I don't know if I'm playing it or not. Put in the sideboard for now, it's pretty easy to kill, but it is good against aggro. Now we get Archon of Sun's Grace. Yep. 
Yep, NJ, Myleria, I definitely agree that Golos is good, and our deck can activate it. I probably should have thought harder about the fact that we have all these Triomes before I didn't pick Golos. But I also feel like we have plenty of expensive stuff. Alright, so none of the cards you're interested in wield. Plenty of black players at the table, it looks like. Um, just take Cemetery from somebody. Ruin their day a little bit. Watery Grave, not going to be played for us. Pretty happy with this deck, though, right? This is 7 lands, right? 25 playables. Take Chart of Course. NJ, I just like that it's an early game spell that also gets late game card selection and ramps us from 3 to 5, where all of our good cards are. We don't have a lot of 4 drops, we have a ton of 5 drops. And Golos was just another 5 drop there. So all of that led to me wanting to pick the Omen. I mean, yes, it cost 3 mana, you were describing the card accurately. You have accurately described Omen, but it's possible Golos is the pick, but we have a lot of 5 drops here and a lot of late game power. Easiest way to lose games with a deck like this is to not get the mana early. All right, I'm gonna cut Daxos, that's just expensive. White mana wise, we've got X 17 lands here. Do I wanna play March? It's good with Tristani, I don't have a ton of creatures to make it really pop off, but it works with the like instant speed flavor of the deck. It's good with Gilded Lotus. I think we are playing March. Do I? Use Time Wipe. How many enchantments am I running here? We got five enchantments. Is five enchantments enough to place the Tessin Champion? Archon's fine, because it's just a good card by itself. I think five enchantments probably isn't quite enough for a Tessin Champion here. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me sad. This card is... Hmm... That's true, Kevlar Mando. I guess Sahili... Sahili actually works pretty well with Tristani and... March of the Multitudes? Maybe we do something like that. Cut Splendor Mare, because it's just kind of a random card. Shepherd, I think, is good enough to be worth playing almost all the time. It's ex excellent at saving your stuff for removal. It's also just an early creature you can play if you're up against Mono Red. I'm just cutting Opt. Could cut Opt, could cut... Eora triggers off Questing Beast, Great Shark, Shark Typhoon, Krasis? On the whole, probably reasonable enough to play. Let's just cut Opt. And then as far as the auto-generated lands go, we've got five, seven white sources. A lot of double white spells. We've got Birth of Miletus, which fetches planes early. Green and blue do seem more imperative. I don't know. For me, it's more annoying when I see the cards trickling off the bottom of the screen. I think it helps NJ that I just play enough magic that I'm just uh, just reading the card to me like sh shows a picture in my head almost. But you're right that it's probably hard for people to watch. Yeah, I like this build. Let's do it. Spend less time deck building, more time playing. No, thanks for the warning, NJ. All right, let's try it. I'm excited for this deck. This deck's going to do some cool stuff. Next time, if we do a third draft on stream tonight, we may stay away from five color ramp. Or three for multicolor ramp stuff. But it is uh it is hard to resist when people keep passing us hydroid crises. It's not really my fault if that's happening. Yeah, I'll keep this. Turn three thoughts intervention to draw two is a thing. Rari's wake plus finale is a thing. I mean, depending on how we draw here, this could just be like a turn like we draw perfectly. This is like a turn five finale. We need to become for angels. Tonight, Maybe that's the goal. Okay, just gonna sit back and make a goose thing here, I think. The opponent's a red deck. They are gonna be slowed down a bit by goose, and I don't think they're gonna be able to stop Wake Finale, the red aggro.
One deck I really want to try building at some point, and I might even force it just to see if I can get it to work, would be like the Artifact deck. It was so frustrating that none of those cards were good back in Arena Cube Sealed. But seeing all those, like, eggs wheel late with me having the Emery in my sideboard made me wonder if I can just do, like, Emery stuff. Also would love to first pick a Divine Visitation at some point. I had one of my favorite Arena Cube Sealed decks was just Blue-White Divine Visitation, and Visitation was amazing with, like, seven or eight token makers. Hey, NJ, thanks for following, by the way. All right, opponent seems to have disconnected. Or they're trying to psych me out into thinking they've disconnected. Yep, NJ, I mean, Dominary Karn's just a great card. It's like one of the most first pickable cards in the whole cube. I used to play uh, an extremely focused Karn Affinity deck back when Karn was in Standard. That was actually fun. That was a really good deck. Okay, looks like our opponent's disconnected, so we don't get to do Wake Glory here, but we'll try to make it happen at some other point during the cube. Okay, moving on to another match real soon here. All right, well, on to the next one. Yep, I'm sure they just disconnected. I've certainly done that to people plenty of times. All right, how's this looking? This hand has some colors and some ramp and no interaction at all. So if I keep this and my opponent's playing an aggro deck, we're going to die. And that's just kind of how it is. But I think it's keep. Don't think you can mulligan to fight hypothetical aggro decks. And that was a very good draw. All right, whew. no no aggro today. Time wipe also a good one to have access to. I actually should have, that was lazy. I forgot they played Mindstone. I absolutely should have held up Disdainful Stroke here. If they cast like a car and I'm going to be very annoyed with myself. No reason to spiral there. Croxa, Croxa I can handle. Huh. What do I get rid of? They haven't played any creatures yet. Part of me just wants to get rid of Time Wipe. Part of me wants to get rid of, like, Thirst for Meaning. I'm going to get rid of Time Wipe. I don't believe that my opponent's going to force me to Wrath before it's not relevant anymore. Okay, Krasis is a good one. Let's um, hang out with Omen, Thirst, and Stroke all up.
Grave Breaker Lamia. Uh, um, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I, I guess I'm slightly worried about what I might put into their graveyard, maybe? I'm gonna just Omen right now. I'm just gonna Omen in response to that. I should have Omened after they put the card in the graveyard, of course, but whatever. Like, that's, that's fine. I can handle a 4-4. Four, four. I think. I just got so much cruft, I need to get out of my hand right now. All right, Phoenix of Ash. So opponent's doing some stuff over there. Cool. I have one more planes to go get. Earth and is coming through. Hand, I now get to hold up Stroke, plus Thassa's Intervention, plus Thirst for Meaning. So that's all good. NJ, it is sweet, but it's very slow. It's very slow to get that stuff going. Admittedly, Thassa's Intervention and Thirst for Meaning are sort of redundant. So it could easily have been much better just to... Keep the time wipe around in case of emergency. I will not pretend that was the perfect play for me. Okay. Well, I guess it's just a uh, thirst for meaning then, probably? Is it that or is it intervention to draw two? I'll hold up the counterspell and intervention. I might want that later. Okay, so I don't get to discard an enchantment, but I do get to keep, uh, huh. Definitely Goose. Is it Goose Temple because I have the Gilded Lotus? Yeah, I think it's Goose Temple. Mirari's Wake. That'll be a sweet one for later, but for now we're just going to Lotus, which lets me hold up just the Infill Stroke and Thassa's Intervention, all that good stuff. I'm going to get some Castle Lockthwain value, but I think we're playing for bigger stakes than that at the moment. I mean, that's all certainly true, NJ. Certainly true. So opponent may have a way to remove an artifact, given they're playing red in there, but we can probably counter most of the things that would work to do that. And Gilded Lotus is just going to make the rest of this hand completely explosive. Like, next turn, I can just go, at the very least, wake into Krasis for six. And then if we ever draw Finale or Shark Typhoon, the game just ends. This would definitely be a good Wilderness Reclamation deck, though. Sad. Sad we didn't get that one. Okay, opponent filling their graveyard over there. That's A-OK. -okay. See if they burn a removal spell on this wall to try and get the Lamia through. Good luck, Drunken Bike. Make a really, really big Hydro Crisis. Play Hydro Crisis for 100. I mean, you'd lose, but it would be worth it. Okay, perfectly happy to trade this wall off for for life. Don't think we're gonna get necessarily a better deal from this wall. Hunted nightmare. Uh, sure. I think I don't mind that. Like it's biggish, but nah. I'm really worried about my opponent having something to kill Gilded Lotus if I counter this, but I think I'm just tapping out for Krasis next turn and possibly Wake, so we'll just do this. Uh, 
Would have been somewhat nice to save that for a countering Kuroxa, but Kuroxa doesn't worry me. And then that pre-combat, they could have brought out Phoenix of Ash. Maybe? Did they play land this turn? Don't recall. I guess maybe they're trying to decide whether it's worth pulling out Phoenix if it means they have to lose Kroxa. These cards are both great with Lamia, but they do kind of conflict with each other. Oh, yeah. Also worth noting that Lamia makes the Phoenix cost one less to cast. They definitely do have Phoenix mana. But they're probably trying to decide whether it's worth doing it and losing Kroxa. Seems like they've made their decision. Okay, or not. Sure. That was weird. Okay, so, well, Questing Beast makes this turn even easier than it would have been otherwise. We play Mirari's Wake. We play a big Questing Beast. We hold up Disdainful Stroke. And the next turn, we play the biggest Krasis in the whole wide world. The only thing that stops me would be like Agonizing Remorse, in which case I'll be sad, but I still get to sack the Omen to scry for a finale. Vraska's Contempt. Nah. I guess if they have some random discard spell now, I lose Krasis and end up a little sad. Ah, uh, okay. So they're just going to attack into Questing Beast and then kill Questing Beast. That is fine. If that is what they want to do with their turn, we will Krasis the heck out of them. Nice. All right. Well, this is what you came for. This is access to 12, 15 mana. So let's do it. I suppose I should probably float one. Yeah, I'll float a blue. Float a white? Come on. Well, that's fine. Mari's Wake gives me one mana of any type the land produced, so I get to just go Glacial Fortress into Sahili. Okay. This is probably going to be pretty good. Worth knowing that Sahili can turn servos into Gilded Lotuses to get even more mana going. I think Ulamog if is in the cube is in the is the most expensive card. Okay, opponent brings out Karoxa, but it's a little a little late for that one. They're gonna need some kind of one sided wrath. So what I can do now is swing with Krasis, play Chart of Course, then turn the Servo into a Gilded Lotus, which is technically mana positive, so very worthwhile to do, also really cool. The Servo is summoning sick, but that sh oh darn. If I turn the Servo into Gilded Lotus, can it tap for mana? Well, let's find out. <laughs> I'm curious. Okay, good, it can tap for mana. Excellent, excellent, all right. So we'll just go QQ, which gives me, oh, plus the island, of course, which gives me 20 mana, which means I can do this for 18. Bazinga. All right, we did the thing. Yep, thanks for confirming that, Nordic Rest. That was a good turn. That was 90, 54, plus two servos, 58. 148 power generated that turn.
Yeah, Ritual of Soot is in the cube. That is a card they could have. I think that Tristani Discordant plus Sahili plus Omen being able to scry for stuff probably still beats them, but the game's not over until they show us they don't have Ritual of Soot. Okay, they no longer have Ritual of Soot. Good. All right, so... Derpy mid-range decks are going to struggle unless they can take out Artifacts and Enchantments, is my guess. Or unless they have something like Embercleave to close the game really quickly. That was fun. This one, no green mana. We do have Kiora into Great Shark, so technically on turn four I can play a 5-4 draw card. We've got Mirari's Wake, March of the Multitudes. We need a lot more mana to get there. Hmm. But Kiora means that I only need, like, one green source. I'll keep it, I'll keep it. We'll try this. This might be bad, but... I like that this can sort of has a plan. Shepherd of the Flock. All right. Um, I'm just casting this. This is like a reasonable distraction. Search for his content. All right. Well, Quilp. Better find some lands, chat. Better find some lands. We never draw any green mana. This deck's going to look like an absolute garbage pile. Opponent mills over Finale of Glory. We know this is the best card in the cube, so it's good that they milled it over. Legion's Landing. Ixalan theme deck over here, huh? All right. Well, uh... Yup, going to sit here awkwardly for a little bit. Disdainful Stroke's a good card to have access to. Could really use a forest, though. Could really use a forest. There we go. All right, so opponent's got counter spells for days over there. I think I'm going to wait a little longer. They did play a tap land last turn. I wouldn't be super surprised if they just had some kind of four drop that they couldn't cast quite yet, especially since they milled this other tap land. Giant killer. Okay, glad to see that one's not coming from my shark. If we just sit here staring at each other, Search for his Conta is going to give him a pretty good advantage, but also not like necessarily game winning advantage. They still have to. Okay. Yup. Nope. 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 Whew. Okay. So is it Marari's. Oh, is it just Questing Beast time? Huh. I was thinking about Marari's Wake. But Questing Beast. Uh, hmm. I guess Mari's Wake could just get killed by something, but it makes all my other turns so good forever that I should just try and play it now. So we'll play Mari's Wake, give our opponent the chance to resolve something, hit them with Shepherd. Given that we have Questing Beast now, we might just scam them to death with the cre creatures attacking, even if they can deal with Wake. But a lot of cards they could have would just... Oh, Lord. All right. I was hoping Elspeth Conqueror's Death was not in the cube, I didn't remember it being in the cube because I never saw it. The reason I never saw it is probably because people take it first every time because Elspeth conquers death. So that's gross. Um, Emmett is questing now. I could quest. I could try to hold up Shark. I think I'm just going to go on a quest here. Tristani's nice. And I think I'm swinging with Shepard. Like, I feel like I'm not going to get rid of this token at any given point, so might as well try and chew through my opponent's stuff. The Jace coming back is a problem for sure. I don't like this Jace coming back. Uh, Corey, I believe Fires is in the cube. All right, what's happening to my quest to be? If opponent is playing like a good focus blue eye control deck, we're going to have a... Uh, some problems, although we can definitely beat Talran Sky Summoner. Questing Beast certainly gives us that capability. All right, Jace is about to come back. What can I do this turn? Everything is expensive. I could play Tristani. But honestly, I'm kind of down to just hold Great Shark. This is instant or sorceries only. I'm going to just hold Great Shark right now. 
Surprise, attacker plus card draw, plus we can also hold March of the Multitudes, depending on how this card turn goes for our opponent. Okay, ECD would be one of those cards that's almost certainly a... It's probably up there with the five best first picks you could get. Heck of a magic card, that one. Okay, what you got, opponent? You got a big angel, you got an immortal sun, you got a... Gilded Lotus, something my shark can eat, please. Milling me, sure. Time wipe. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. So Talran goes back, everything dies. I'm going to try and play this shark. And they would need Stroke to stop it, I think. And if they counter this on their turn, I get to resolve Tristani. Essence Scatter, right, that's a card too. Punish for not playing March out. That's Finale of Glory, so I can play that for five. And just make them have another Time Wipe immediately. I think I'm into that. Let's see if they can have another Time Wipe immediately. There are not that many Wraths in this cube. Ascanta flips. Ascanta flips. What's going on over there, Oppo? Your being able to untap lands of different colors has definitely been excellent this game. We lost Shark Typhoon. That's one of our surprise winning cards. Archon of Sun's Grace. Oh no. A Pegasus. Except for if this is all they've got, Tristani is still lethal? It was not all they had. Tristani is not lethal. Goodness me. Okay. So I guess... I probably want to go for March here into Tristani. I can also go Tristani into March. If I play Tristani now... Oh, these all have Vigilance, right? These all have Vigilance. That's pretty good. Okay. So we Tristani... Everything gets big. Archon can eat one token, but we still force a lot of blocking. Jace does not do ult stuff yet. Talrand is pretty useless. But it can save Hanged Executioner to take care of Tristani, which I assume is the plan. Well, I can time wipe the Tross, but against a Jace that's going to be on 8 loyalty, I suspect that's not going to help me very much. We'll see. Alright, so we got Fortress, we got Untap, the Forest doesn't really matter. Hand, do I march now or do I wait? I think I wait. I think I wait because my opponent's just taking lethal off of what's on board now. Admittedly, Birth of Miletus... Opponents milling themselves at this point. They've got a they've got plenty of cards in the library. We're not about to die to Jace. They are dead on board, except for not with Hanged Executioner taking down Tristani. Okay, as Kanta taps. In response to that, do I jam march? They could find a counter off of this. They could also find a Shatter or something like that, but if they have Shatter, I can't get March in anyway. Alright, I'm going to March in response to this. That's one, two, three. How dead are they? They hold up a Counter, they hold up Hanged Executioner. I'll March in response here. Actually, the responsible thing there is probably just march for, like, a smaller amount and hold up some mana to stop potential counters. I don't see if my opponent finds exactly Shatter off the Siskanta. If they do, they got me fair and square. Shark Typhoon does not do it. Shark Typhoon definitely does not do it. 
Kiora goes down. Opponent's super dead, though, unless they have exactly Shatter as one of their two cards in hand, or they could cycle into it off Typhoon, I guess. Okay, all right, all right. They're looking for Shatter. They're looking for Shatter, chat. Elite Guard Mage doesn't do it. Oof, all right. That was a challenge. But that did work. That did work. Okay. Instant speed stuff for the win. That was a sweaty game, chat. Thanks, NJ. Probably probably made some mistakes along the way there, but taking a bunch of powerful cards and having lots of mana does tend to work out. Thanks, Tammy. I got scratches. Pretty scratchy. <sighs> One thing's for sure, whenever we play cube, we do get some good games of magic on this stream. Same was true back in Cube Sealed. It'd be pretty funny if it turns out the secret purpose of magic online a uh, magic design this whole time was just to make cube excellent. And that's been like the secret, is all the cards that made standard kind of bad are actually just amazing in cube. This hand is not keepable. That did not have mana that worked. This hand is keepable. It does have mana that works. Um, guess I'm just dumping this island. Actually, I'm not sure the play there was in Doth the Triumph. I might want to cycle that at some point. Yikes. Okay, Knight of the Ebon Legion is a scary one. I'm going to Temple here, just to see if I can scry into something that does something against creatures. Shepherd of the Flock technically does something against creatures, but I also kind of hate it. It just doesn't work. It doesn't do much here. Going to start looking for Time Wipes and Questing Beasts and Tristanis and that sort of thing. Even Birth of Miletus. That's a common experience, NJ, for sure. Okay, that one goes down. Gonna be a challenge for facing off against a bona fide aggro deck. Alright, Guild of Goose actually kinda helps though, huh? I like Guild of Goose. We're taking two off Breeding Pool to get that down this turn. Yeah, blocks Brain Maggot, so certainly it is. Goose helps, Goose helps. Just need like Finale or once we get once we get Guild of Lotus down. We're just going to need, like, Finale or Crasis or March. We got a bunch of card draw to find those things, but opponent does have a lot of cards in hand. Ephemia is not impressive. Ephemia the Cacophony is not impressive here. And Gilded Goose is going to start gaining three life a turn, thanks to Gilded Lotus. Oh, look, it's Finale of Glory. Okay, so we got, like, a... Uh, a lot of friggin' Tutus coming out soon, if the opponent doesn't have another discard spell. This is already up to 9 mana with Goose. Tithe Taker, that is fine. So Goose costs 3 to activate, but I have Gilded Lotus, so I can still hold up Goose here. Good to note that Tithe Taker makes food more expensive. And is it finale time? Mmm. If I birth and then I hit another land off my draw step, I'm then casting finale for... Hmm, that's still just nine, huh? It's not enough. All right, so... Yeah, this is finale for seven. Ready in a finale for seven? I don't think this just wins the game by any means against the uh, Ephemia potentially making tokens and the knight doing things, but... It's good enough. It's good enough. We'll start here. Plenty of scary stuff our opponent could land here. Like a Doom Whisper or even a Spawn of Mayhem would still have me sweating bullets. Running up Finale early also makes Time Wipe much worse, but March of the Multitudes and Tristani are now much better. 
So that's good. Baffleyan takes a token. Alright, opponent's, uh... Glad they didn't take Goose. Goose is gonna buy me a lot of time. Questing Beast is good. Okay, let's do that then. So, I guess we're going all out attack here. We're gonna lose a soldier tonight. A soldier to Tithe Taker, possibly, but given that baffling end, our opponent's afraid of the offense. Might as well bring it to them. They could give us back Kiora at this point, just block with Brain Maggot and then turn to another 2 2 with Ephemia. Wouldn't surprise me if that was the plan here. Wow, not even blocking with Knight of the Ebon Legion. They have another spell? That was a. Uh... An odd one. Okay, so now we just get to go Kiora. Yeah, I feel like we're we're very, very, very far ahead at this point. Finale too strong, opponent's cards not impactful enough. Thanks for recommending the Undo Send feature, Tammy. I agree, it's a really good one. Prison Realm. Alright, I suppose Questing Beast probably not long for this world. If only we had Shepherd of the Flock. No, it's fine. Boy, this, this life gain is so nice. I just feel so comfortable with Goose on the board. Still confused why the opponent didn't block with that Knight of the Ebon Legion before. Sahili. Uh, I guess it gives me an extra 2-2. Can make my wall or a food token into a knight. She actually does a bunch of weird stuff here, huh? Fun. Do I actually... I guess I do that, right. I should just do that. So Healy comes down, we're gonna make a food token into a knight. Okay, so Sahili was like a 2-2 haste, that's something. Probably underestimate the cool uses of Sahili. Should probably be playing with that card more in cube. What are these night blocks? Alright, they're finally going for it. Whoa. I think my opponent forgot that knight had an activated ability or something. That's puzzling. I'm gonna actually not make this Wolf of Haven token. Our opponent's easily dead enough that I don't really need to use this. So in case they have a Wrath, I might as well save it to get a creature afterward. Confusing game all around, night-wise. <sighs> so, question to the chat. Has anybody uh, been playing Arena Cube Draft so far? And if so, were there any cards that impressed you much more than you thought they would? Cards that, like, sur positively surprised you? Alright, let me just make a quick check. Shepherd of the Flock has felt mm, pretty iffy. Is there anything else I want to be playing instead of that card? Deputy, maybe? Hmm. I'll keep Shepherd around for now.
Risk the Redeemed. That's a good one. Fond of that card, just as being like a cool little one mana commander type thing. Used to try playing Commander a little bit on Magic Online. It did not play it for long because it was pretty underpowered, but definitely a card I retain fondness for. Drunk and Viked, it looked like your opponent was playing a full Enchantress deck, or was it just like Archon being a good body plus like maybe one other enchantment or something? Huh, taking a curiously long time to queue in. It feels like these drafts have been filling up really fast. Here we go. Fresh Lop, I recognize this name. Played against this person before, I think. Uh, this hand. It's got all the colors. It's got a lot of expensive garbage. But there's a time wipe. I'll keep for the time wipe. All right, fourth land is great, especially a white source. Time wipe is now castable. All right, it's the aggro matchup. Finally, finally this happens. I've been waiting for this to happen. Hey, look, an Archon of Sun's Grace. I think we're going to be fine, though. We have Thassa's Intervention into Finale of Glory, into Time Wipe, into Archon plus Marari's Wake. Rampaging Ferocidon is definitely not my favorite thing in the world to see. But I think we'll be able to just survive. But it could burn us out, I guess. Getting burned out would be a possibility. Bri, no, you do not get to keep all the cards from the cube draft. It would be a lot more expensive if you could. But the gold returns aren't terrible. Slaying fire at me. I mean, I guess not. I guess not. Going to be close. Going to be real close. If they have Ember Cleave or something, we are going to die to this. Oof. All right, that's very, very good damage. Officially drop into eight. That's a big Steamkin, too. They didn't cast anything off of it. All right, so I just need to block the Steamkin to survive, so I'm going to play Finale here. Going to take two off of the Ferocidon and then three when it attacks. But it's better than just running out Archon for no value. We're probably dead, though. Probably dead. Any any reasonable spell in the opponent's hand just kills us. I mean, I think that's for, like, an absolutely average record, Kevlar Man, and I assume the folks here probably have... are pretty good at this. We're dead, right? Yep, exactly dead. Nice. So, opponent kills us turn five through two pieces of interaction. They had a very good red deck, and... Yep. Nicely done, fresh lot, nicely done. Still, though, it's good to think we have a slow hand, and still being on the play, we would have easily won that. So, don't feel terrible about the deck, but you gotta respect those red ones. <laughs> that kind of curve will just crush you. Yeah, it's alright, it's good to get the wake-up call. So you can't just do a rampy value all the time. Sometimes you gotta play black, green, rock. Rampaging Ferocidon is one heck of a magic card. I don't know, Jubilee. If we counter the Ferocidon and have a turn four Archon of Sun's Grace before they have anything down on board, they slaying fire it, and then we have Mirari's Wake into Finale. But maybe not easy. Okay, Monterey again. Shadow Spear. Well, I like Krasis. I like Shark. Sahili, not the best. But not having a two drop is great if they are Monterey.
Oh, I don't know. 781. I think Ferocidon might have been about as good as Hazaret. All right, opponent's draw was just terrible. Lince Horn Buccaneer. Yeah, okay. Sure. Oh, look, it's questing. Oh, oh, uncastable questing beast. So sad. All right, got some choices here. Hold Shark. I think it's just Hold Shark, actually. I don't see the opponent do anything particularly menacing. No, 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 no. We got a Shark people. We got a Shark people, NJ. Twitch chat loves sharks. Well, maybe they just attack Sahili, try to get me down. I mean, if that's the whole plan, do I try to ambush them with a shark? They have slaying fire. I'm a little sad, I guess. But let's make them have it. There's not much besides slaying fire that actually takes the shark down. I guess red cat melee would do it, too. A burn spell at least leaves Sahili alive. Could be Infuriate. Infuriate would be good. All right, cool. Buccaneer down, nothing to equip to. Sahili lives. Perfect turn. And now I'm pretty down to start to increase this time wipe things, NJ. You finally get to see it. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if this just got lava coiled or something. Well, it didn't have a lot of creatures in their opening. Okay. So I might just do that, huh? It actually seems basically worthwhile this time wipe bring Krasis back to hand now. Um, I don't really love hardcasting Shark Typhoon because Time Wipe's gonna kill all the sharks anyway whenever that gets cast. Maybe hardcast Shark Typhoon later, but I'm gonna start here. Bring Krasis back, kill a giant, and basically draw three more cards next turn. Siege Gang's Dece, Siege Gang's Dece, but Krasis is a little too, too big here, I think. Lands are great. Archon of Sun's Grace with Omen of the Hunt, also great. Next turn is probably Hardcast Shark Typhoon turn. Hardcast, uh, play Archon, play Shark Typhoon, and then all of our spells are generating infinite tokens forever. Still gotta watch out for Ember Cleave, maybe gotta watch out for something like Claim the First Board on Krasis, giving our opponent some burst damage. Act of Treason, alright, so we take 11. Taking 13, okay, 13, the opponent's got 8 points of burn between the goblins and the siege gang, so that's something. I'm thinking Archon Typhoon probably still ends it, but that was a great turn for the opponent. No doubt about it. They can shoot down Archon, but it's going to take a lot of mana and resources with our Shark Typhoon sitting on the board. Torbran, yikes! Okay. Okay, we might actually die. Might actually die to this because we... Uh, I was too eager to do the time wipe thing. Much too eager to do the time wipe thing. It's gonna be tough. Siege Gang Commander now represents 12 damage a burn to the face. 
Although attacking here seems bad, right? I don't know about this. No, nah, I mean, I'm trying to play fun games out here, and I wouldn't mind if we got a chance to draft once more today anyway. I mean, perfectly happy to block with Krasis. If the opponent wants to shock the Krasis to death, that's fine. That was a weird attack. I don't understand that one. All right, do I have anything to take Torbran off the battlefield here? I don't really think so. I'm starting with Thirst anyway. See what I find off of this. Need to do something about some of their cards. Disdainful Stroke is a little late. Uh, huh. Yeah, gonna need to cast Thassa's Intervention, I guess. What's the thing that I hit here that saves me? What is in my deck? Birth of Miletus doesn't do it, it's too slow. Shepherd of the Flock doesn't do it. I actually should have discarded Omen there. Think we're dead, think we're dead. Okay, so we... What are the cards in this deck? What are the cards in this deck right now? Um... We don't have Deputy, we don't have anything like a Banishing Light. We basically have no removal besides Time Wipe. Tristani doesn't gain me life immediately. Hmm. I think we're dead, but let's try Thassa's Intervention for, we'll say, uh, X equals 2 in case I forgot something. Okay, yep, yep, just dead. Did make a lot of sharks before he died, though. Shepherd Krasis might have kept us alive. Oh, Guild of Goose. Guild of Goose. Oh, it's too expensive. Oh, we're a mana short, chat. We're a mana short. Oh, uh, no. Oh, God, I forgot about Guild of Goose. I don't think it would have changed the pattern of this turn at all, but... Oh, we were so close. All right, so that was some laziness against Mono Red. Should absolutely not have time wiped there against one Bone Crusher Giant on 23 life, but we got punished much harder than I believed was possible. Let's win the last three. So, very loose play from us. We'll try to play tight. Bry, they had uh, three Siege Gang Commander triggers, all of which dealt four damage because of Torbrand. So we were, we were quite dead to cards on board. Good to remember Guild of Goose, though. Um, yeah, okay. We got, we got mana with the Goose. Of different colors here. Kind of awkward that Birth of Miletus doesn't do anything for us now. We can discard it to Thirst for Meaning if we draw it anytime soon. Ooh, Goose turns on Shard, of course, if we draw an island next turn. Nah, I was pretty sure they were going to see that line. All right. Oh, no! Oh, God, what? <laughs> the cheeky Goose attack to turn on Shard, of course, and they had a 2-2 with Reach and Flash. Chat. No! What the hell? Why is everything punished today? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, F's for the goose. I mean, we still drew a card off of it, so it's not the end of the world. But just, you think nothing bad could possibly happen, and something very terrible happened. We even drew the untapped blue source to lead us perfectly into temptation, chat. Oh my goodness. First remaining now in case they have the a goal. counter spell of some kind. Gonna discard... Uh, probably like land... Sahelia is completely uncastable. A 
little bit juvile, a little bit dead inside. 40 is greater than 60. Thanks for the follow. Okay, well, Tristani is still helpful. Biogenic ooze is a problem. We're going to need to stall until we find time wipe. But that is a thing that could happen. We could survive. Okay, finale is nice too with Tristani. We've got ourselves a game. Opponents, you know, got a fast curve though. Certainly uh, fighting us on board pretty powerfully. Not giving us time. Like, this is how to do mid range. I guess I don't know if their deck is technically mid range or ramp, but just with a little bit of ramp, playing big stuff ahead of the curve, outpacing the slower decks like ours. Whatever they have in their hand, it can't possibly be good for us. Biogenic Ooze just by itself almost murders us. Dungeon Geists. That's fine, as fine things go. If they're holding up two mana for a counter spell, it's problematic. I almost want them to grow this Wildborn Preserver just so I know we're not dead. Grow it, grow it, grow it. Don't have a counter spell. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. We're getting somewhere. Kind of. Finale's nice. Oh, Time Wipe's nice. All right, that was, uh, that was very convenient. I'll take it. Didn't deserve it, but I'll take it. Oh, my poor goose. My poor goose. I feel like a sad puppy every time I get punished, Kevlar Man. Ooh, opponent was keeping all their ramp creatures for later. This Wayward Sword Tooth can attack now, notably. Ah, uh, it was true, Kevlar Man, it was true. The two life could easily matter. I was just so excited, chat, so excited. Can you blame me? All right, so we just Tristani again here, I think. Prior to finaleing, I like getting the lifelink stuff going, given that this Wayward Sword Tooth has to tap in order to attack. Chemisters, that's safe. Nice and safe. They are attacking. All right. Lots of mana available with this carry added. We could just chemisters again also. Not out of the woods yet. Without the earlier ramp, our deck definitely uh, does mediocre stuff later in the game. White source. Okay, there's a seventh land. So, is the plan to do Kiora untap, hold up Great Shark? I believe that is the plan, yes. Resolves, nice. We've also got, so we've got Disdainful Stroke and Great Shark available. Cutting off most of the scariest things our opponent could do here. And Thos Intervention for good measure. So unless they have two different meaningful spells, we're in pretty good shape. I mean, like a Hydra Crisis would still be bad. Gracious Hydra. Okay. So... Doing the shark thing makes me really vulnerable to something that counters shark. They did deliberately choose to sink less mana into this in case of a counter spell, but I still think we go for it. It's more likely I think they just have a second threat than a counter spell. NJ, if you cast Crisis for... A mana cost that makes it cost at least four mana, you can stroke it. That is how converted mana cost works on the stack. Okay, what was their second thing?
Shepard looking great with Great Shark. Okay, Tristani is dead. Good use of red mana there, opponent. Definitely trading with Sword Tooth, even though it means I can't do the Shepherd trick. I've got plenty of counter magic. All right, we're now at eight mana. Finale, not that impressive still. Shepherd doesn't really do anything fancy or interesting. I think I'm just going to hold back here. Keep Thoth's Intervention up to draw a bunch of cards and a Disdainful Stroke up to stop a threat. Got a Krasis in my deck somewhere that I could go find. Mind Stone is okay. Okay, we'll go Intervention X4. Do we still hold up Disdainful Stroke, or do we just go Whole Hog on this? I think I go Whole Hog. If the opponent's a Counterspell, it's probably not a Counterspell that costs four mana or more. If they have Frilled Mystic, then I've been gotten. Nope. All right, March. And Questing Beast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't need, don't need more lands that badly. Nice. Okay. Just going to keep holding up stroke. I think I'm winning this game pretty handily. The way it's going, so I just want to make sure my opponent doesn't draw anything to reverse that. Questing Beast isn't going to kill him anytime soon with this goose hanging out. But I think we're doing fine. Do I march now? I just trade Questing Beast? Could trade the could block with the token here. I get rid of the shark sometime. Questing Beast does fine for that. Okay, gonna march now. Gets me out of a uh, range of a lot of things. Excellent if I find Mirari's Wake at some point. And I'm just looking to get this game over with, too. There we go. I'll take that. Thanks. Can't draw it here. Shepherd of the Flock, not looking great here, still. Probably shouldn't be in the deck, might cut it for the last two matches. In Bolas... Oh, I take it back, Shepherd of the Flock. You're doing a good job, buddy. You're doing a good job. Shepherd just determined to absolutely make me look silly. Okay, so now I have 10 lands, which means I can go Archon, Wake, hold up Disdainful Stroke without even having to use Kiora. Actually, I could have gone Wake, untap a land, play Finale for 10, huh? <laughs> could have done that too. <laughs> well, whatever. Alright, well, Shepard, uh, <laughs> I guess Shepard stays in the deck then. I would hate to cut, cut him after that. Back in we go. We'd love to beat him on a red deck, get some revenge there. 
They do not, Dr. Lippy, they do not. Yep, any hand with Goose on one is a pretty compelling keep. Unless there are other lands and stuff. Yep, no, time wipe is great. No, agree no argument that if you're not playing a bunch of spot removal, something like a time wipe really helps. And do I drop Kiora now? I don't think so. I don't think so. Opponent didn't play anything. They could easily have a random counter spell. I don't want to burn through my food just yet. Ryan Board and Cutthroat. Okay. Okay, okay. Shark Typhoon's going to be pretty good against this opponent, I wager. All right, just a proper blue-black mutate deck over here. Let's go. Yora is going to be under pressure immediately for the first time that we've seen here. But she does live, and she lets me get a Shark Typhoon for four off in the process. So here goes. Soaks up a bunch of life, too. Okay, opponent's not actually doing the counterspell thing. They're just beating the snot out of me. Are they going to go after Kiora? They are, all right. Sure. Phoenix is... Ooh, Mirari's Wake. All right. Uh, Is that the plan, then? Mirari's Wake this turn. Lose Kiora. So I can go Shark Typhoon... Make a 4-4, four, four, possibly block Serpent, draw a card of Kiora. I could also play Mirari's Wake and then use make a much bigger shark next turn. The problem being that I'm taking a lot of damage in the meantime. Tough, tough. one has got a good curve going. I feel like the odds of them having a removal spell in hand are like a little too high for my comfort. Let's just jam wake. Don't think we super need goose now. I'm going to untap goose because it blocks cutthroat and because Kiora being on two versus one loyalty doesn't really make a big difference. No! Oh, Lord. All right. Well, Tristani's going to have to do some good work here, chat. <laughs> ah, God, or you have to find Time Wipe or something. Tide Sail Freebooter is really good, but Goose Wake is also good. Still holding off Cutthroat, still making food a lot. March of the Multitudes, you say? All right, is Tristani about to get countered? Let's find out. We've still got a lot of food we can make, so if Tristani gets countered, it's fine, and it did not get countered, so March of the Multitudes is looking absolutely sick here. The goose became Canadian. I don't understand it, but it's funny somehow. All right, so now we just march, right? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. March stuff. Or I could march next turn for much more, huh? All right, never mind. I'm marching next turn for much more. There's no reason to rush here. Just going to lose this one token. Goodbye. Elvis Reborn doesn't get anything scary for my opponent at this point. Hey, bloody, how's it going? We've been top decking like an absolute champ to be ahead in this one. So it's not over yet. Earth of Miletus, not bad either. I do lose a token off it, but I get a wall later and also thin my deck a bit. That seems worthwhile. Okay, so that's 10, 13, so this is March of the Multitudes X10. 
Better have a ritual of soot opponent. You better have a ritual of soot. Your go. Hey, Crystal Wing, thanks for the subscription. Glad you're enjoying the stream you've been watching here. You've found the win for us. And very, very soon you're gonna have some sweet emotes to use as a result. Just waiting for Twitch's approval at this point. Everything's in the system. All right, six and two. Now it's a final boss match. Now it is a final boss match. B forward. Let's go. Let's go. We'd love to get one more giant finale of glory. Oh my goodness. Well, this is all the tools for the giant finale of glory, but um hands horrible if we can't find ramp, but we've got we've got around the draw, we have the temple. We can play a defensive finale or a defensive crisis if we absolutely have to. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. Let's go. Oh my god, it's Monterey again. What did I do, chat? Why do I do this? Come on, Growth Spiral. Come on, Wolf Willow Haven. Forest. I keep Forest. Oh, goodness. All right, so this is my fault. Absolutely shouldn't have kept this hand. We're just going to die in horrible fashion. But hey, that gives us more time to get one more draft in. <laughs> and play maybe one match with the new deck. Okay, so what do I need now? Time Wipe? Ramp of some kind? Shark Typhoon, actually? I'm going to keep Shark Typhoon. That cycles and kills the Rimrock Knight. I mean, I'm going to do Shark Typhoon, obviously. we. So ter plan is to cycle Shark Typhoon, kill Rimrock, play Finale X2, eventually draw a fifth land, use that to play Tristani. If my opponent has Embercleave, I'm just going to die. But that is, that is often how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. No, Burn Spell's okay, just no Cleave. Burn Spell on the Shark is fine. Sahili, really bad, really bad. Don't do it. Infuriate's fine. Okay, 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 okay. No cleave, no cleave, no cleave, no cleave. Two knights handles my opponent's whole board, technically. Even that one, even that one's fine. Charter course. Oh god, need uh alright, do I crace this to train hit the fifth land or does Finale have better blockers? Um it's Yeah, I think it's Crasis. I think I just really, really want to hit that fifth land. Well, I mean it's happy it makes me happy to hear that bottle brush. Alright, so we uh Kept that land on top of Temple and have missed since then. Going to nine. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. This is still fine. Come on, land for Tristani. Land for Tristani. Land for Tristani. Okay. All right. That's not, that's not it, but it's kind of it. <laughs> well, knowing you're watching Bloody, I'll try to be extra responsible when I draft. Opponent's got something, what is it, Shock? Grimmish Ship plus Dark Dweller Oracle is actually a lot of cards, but we're at a healthy-ish life total, minus Embercleave. Yeah, Dark Dweller fortunately doesn't work end of turn with Grimmish yet. Holding on for dear life. <laughs> Three loaded. Oh, you're killing me. The bargaining stage of Mono Red. <laughs> Please, no cleave. Please, no cleave. That's actually kind of perfect. Denial. No, they don't have a cleave. I don't remember what order the other stages come in. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a terrible cognitive science major. Okay, mountain, sure. Fine. 
Ferocidon, not good. Not good. Not insurmountable, just not good. What am I doing now? Need to get this friggin' thing off the board at some point. Arena Craft Podcast, hi, thanks for the raid. Um, is this just the wake turn? If I awake, Ferocidon's gonna put me to like. I can block Rimrock Knight Oracle, Ferocidon's gonna put me to five. I Tristani, I literally take three and gain nothing. I honestly think I might need to hold stuff up this turn. I'm just plan to play like Shark, try to counter something. Uh Yeah, I think I just hold Shark, honestly. I feel like I can't even afford to wake. God, Rampaging Ferocidon is so good. I just need to get that off the board at any cost. Direfleet Daredevil is going to pick up Finale of Glory, so we can't let you have that, I'm afraid. Take one. Everything but Monored, Arjuna. Everything but Monored. Although we're now getting close to maybe having some offensive presence against them, especially once we cast this Wake. Oof. Okay, we're at six. They've got a lot of card draw off this Dark Dweller Oracle. Once again, we definitely need Time Wipe. That's helpful, though. That's helpful. So I can't wake into Growth Spiral. I can wake into Chart, of course. Can't afford to play Tristani and drop a... What do they have attacking me next turn? Oh... What if they attack? I can block, double lock for Ostan, block Rimrock Knight, go to one life. But Tristani doesn't really help very much. She kind of does, I guess, actually. I get to start attacking with these knights if I play Tristani. I go to three, but I have blockers for everything. I have blockers for everything. And I am getting in for a lot of damage. Is that good enough? I think going down to one if I play Wake just doesn't work. I think I've got to just like have blockers set up for everything and risk dying to Lightning Strike. They've actually already played Lightning Strike, so I'm not going to die to that. I could die to some other things. Okay, gonna be close. Gonna be real close, but they have a lot of draw. <laughs> Anonymous Gray, thanks for the cheers. Okay, step one, not dead. Oh, they're desperate. They're sacking the stuff that can't block. Okay. Oh, no. It's rekindling Phoenix. Uh, oh, and we're through our Shark Typhoon already. But the opponent does go to 12 off of that. They go to 12. There might be something we can do beyond drawing Time Wipe here. There might be something. All right. Um, got to be all at attack here. We got to pressure them into blocking with this Phoenix, basically, so that we can time wipe it. Otherwise, I with with Krasis and Shark Typhoon out of the deck, I'm not sure we can actually do anything about Phoenix. I don't think we can. Here we come. Ardvark really just time wipe, unfortunately. Charge! Wait, if I played Marari's Wake... They were not dead to Marari's Wake here, not even close, unfortunately. They are, they are trading off Phoenix, though. Trading off Phoenix means I could draw Time Wipe off of Charter Course. That's actually good. That's actually really good. Now wait, they're going to 
They're going to a tiny life total. They're a... Uh, they're almost dead. They're almost dead. Phoenix dies. They take nine. They go to two off the frost on, and they bring Phoenix back, and they go to... Oh, wait, they're dead. Oh, my gosh, I miscounted. They missed a block. All right. Uh, uh, yep, they just missed their blocks. Well, that didn't feel clean, but we did... Beat a rampaging Ferocidon. Let this be a lesson to you, chat. Drafting like blockers and early creatures is not exactly enough. You also probably need removal because rampaging Ferocidon is a magic card. But still, it was definitely a weird way for the draft to end, and I do enjoy weird games of magic. Okay. Yeah, charged in, and they were just so scared. Let's uh, let's go again. Gonna think a little bit harder about Mono Red while we draft here. Would love to try and get the Artifact deck going. Possibly some kind of token deck. I don't know, I want to play an Archetype. I don't just want to play a Ramp, I want to play an Archetype. Ugh. Ooh, okay, well... <laughs> if I wanted to play Mono Red, I would take Rampaging Ferocid on and try to wheel Anax or something. Not a big Mono Red fan, so let's see what else we've got here. Entrancing Melody. I love Entrancing Melody. Joey Miller, are you sure? It's day one. It seems a little early to say that. Um, yeah, all the cards in this pack are kind of bad, except for Ferocidon, Temple Garden, and Entrancing Melody. Legends, I don't think is real. Legends, I'd be very surprised if that were real. Let's, uh... I'm just not in the mood to run people down. I want to take Melody. Well, if you say so, Joey, if you say so. Gosh, no. Do I just take Temple Garden? I mean, I think Frostdawn's better than Anax, because Frostdawn shuts off life gain, but they're probably close. They're probably close. Well, let's take Melody. Second one keeps me open to something like the Artifact deck. Ooh, Sea Dash or Octopus. Okay, all right. One of my favorite just archetypes in Magic is just, like, hitting you and drawing cards with the stuff that's hitting you. I think Sea Dasher is considerably weaker than Rankle, um, at the very least, but I love this card. I'm going to try taking it. Let's Sea Dasher some people. Yes, yeah, Sissay, Sissay might work. I don't know. Just keeping your 4 drop around if it's a 2 2 seems hard, even in cube. Yes, I think Rankle was the best card in the pack and probably the correct pick, but I want to try and do the Sea Dasher thing. See if I can do it. Let's just Curious Obsession some people, maybe. They certainly are both in the cube, yes. Okay, well, um, huh. So there's really not much here for the mono blue archetype. I can take a winged words, which is not impressive. It's like fine, but not exciting. Could take Jace, I guess. It's like a mono blue card. All right, I'm seeing Ruin Raider, and I really like Ruin Raider. It's kind of like having a staggering insight or a curious obsession. Hmm. I also kind of love Ranger of Eos. I just like like this magic card a lot. I don't know if it's good in the cube. It seems high po high potential. Love Ruin Raider. Don't hate Jace, but it doesn't really go with the theme of like curious obsessioning people. Archon's also reasonable. There are a bunch of reasonable cards. It's often how cube goes. Let me grab... There are like four good white cards in this pack. I'm actually going to take Ranger of Eos. It works with the Staggering Insight type thing. Ooh, Mentor of the Meek, Elite Guard Mage. All right, so maybe there's like a blue... Return of the Wild Speaker is here. Oh, wow. Huh. I'm not taking it here, but this card's good. Let's take Mentor. Going for kind of like a blue-white value, value aggro type thing here. Not the strongest thing we could be doing here, I'm sure, but maybe we can wheel dive down? That'd be nice. Would love to wheel dive down. All right, Hypnotic Sprite feels like the thing we're doing here. 
So there is like a green white tokens deck that's being passed around pretty hard. We just passed Tristani. There's Shalai and March of the Multitudes in this pack. And I do like green white tokens a lot too. Doesn't super work with Sea Dash or Entrancing Melody. The question is, are we actually going to take Hypnox Sprite, which seems a lot worse than March of the Multitudes? There was even a Return of the Wild Speaker, which is extremely good with March of the Multitudes. Maybe change of plans. I think I want to lean in the green white tokens direction. We, of course, immediately get Skycat Sovereign. Ooh, Domri Anarcha Bolas. This is good if we're doing, like, Naya tokens, which we're probably not. Trapped in the Tower seems awful. Shadow Spear is probably playable in basically any deck. Maybe it's Domri. Maybe Naya tokens could be a thing. There's Heroic Reinforcements in this cube. You could also just grab Skycat and stay open to blue-white flyers. There's even Bant tokens. Skycat's kind of like a Bant tokens-y card. I'll take Skycat. Oh, it's medium. Everything there was kind of medium. All right, we got Favorable Winds. Okay, Favorable Winds is a... F really specific to the Flying Archetype. Really specific to the Flying Archetype. Which is not necessarily what we're going to end up doing here. The Heroic Reinforcement seems amazing if you have a deck for it. There's Illyrios. Pretty iffy aggro card. Gives us options to do things like pick up a Thassa later. Silent Departure is like okay if we're just trying to get through people. Mitsuko is great with March. Noted, but I don't think we're playing Bant tokens here. I'm going to take Silent Departure. Charming Prince, Brianborn, Cutthroat. Now, well, Prince is cute with Mentor. Ranger, it's not really going to work with because we're not going to have more than two one-drops in any case. Not bad with certain other green-white tokens-y cards. Elvish Rejuvenator would be the card for green-white tokens. I think it has a ramp spell with a 1-1 token attached almost. Ooh, this deck is looking like a mess here. Yeah, I love Charming Prince. You don't have to tell me twice. I've gotten some very high ladder rankings with Charming Prince. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. Circle, Ministrant. Oh, man. None of these are great. Terranika could be quite powerful if we're just trying to aggro people down. Ministrant's better with, like, the flying token type synergies and Mentor of the Meek. It's like Ministrant. It's good Wrath Protection, too. Okay. This is Easy Trickster. Love some lands. All right, wow. <laughs> All right, well, every card came back that we could possibly have been interested in. Huh, tough choice between, like, Pride of Conquerors, Archon. We have, like, no real enchantment stuff going on. I think I just take Pride. This card ends the game in a real hurry. Return of the Wild Speaker. Yeah, we could still be tokens with Pride and Return. So now we actually have to make a choice. Do we take Return on the off chance for tokens, or do I just take Dive Down? which is great with, like, Sea Dash or Octopus specifically. I'm going to try staying open, see how that feels. Okay, Domri, Kiora, neither of these is great for either of the archetypes. I was thinking, I guess I'll grab Domri. And Illyrio, sorry, right, so... Some things are open. I don't know what this means for us. Okay, this pack has nothing really for us. Safara, way, way, way too... I just think this, this, the odds of getting enough flyers to make this work consistently and having all those flyers survive does not seem good. Kosick, Kosick. Uh, it's fine. It's definitely tier two. I think the Jun matchup is pretty medium and the Erect matchup is hard. And I hear those are the two best decks. All right, this is just Triumph. Uh, Tryon doesn't go well in green, white, or <laughs> white, blue. Oh, wow, this pack is awful. What am I doing? I guess Dauntless Bodyguard fits with Ranger of Eos. Be nice to get some Ranger of Eos things. Harmonious Archon's also fine. That's a good point. Harmonious Archon is a green, white tokens card. I really wish I'd gotten that Elvish Reclaimer before now. Yeah, Dauntless isn't bad, but it probably wheels. Even in a pack that bad, Dauntless probably wheels, given how much white was wheeling in the first pack. But certainly we want to keep an eye on picking up some one-drops to make Ranger playable. 
Okay, so still not certain whether we're going like green swarm, green white swarm, or blue white flashy stuff. Huh. That guy's Dragon Master Outcast, which is a heck of a Ranger of Eos target. I think I'm just taking Raugren Triome. Helps me splash Domri if I'm green white. Just helps me play my spells if I'm blue white. Thoughts Intervention, Essence Capture are both strong, but gonna need some lands no matter where I end up. Definitely not Enforcer, Kevlar, man. That That's that's very likely to wheel. That was a stronger pack. Why would you want to move, bloody? You're watching my stream. Super rude. Come on. One thing about Cube is eventually you do have to commit to your archetype. <laughs> like, we're going to have to make a real decision pretty soon. Can't keep splitting the difference. Ooh... All right, we now know. We now know what's going on. Divine Visitation is super sick. But are we going to wheel it? We're definitely going to wheel this. There are some bad cards in this pack. There's like Slaughter Priest, Amogus, Angrath, Izoni are all really bad cards. Could just take Breeding Stomping Ground, which does the Splash Domery thing pretty well. Breeding Pool does the Splash Sea Dasher Octopus thing pretty well, which is not unreasonable. Ugh. Tough. Tough. I'm take Stomping Ground. We're gonna wheel this. We're gonna reel that Divine Visitation. Hello, Amber Cleave. This card is a savage bomb. Um, this card is absurd. Integrity Intervention is pretty iffy. Domri's Ambush is pretty iffy. Spell Pierce and God's Willing are both fine. I'm just going to take Ember Cleave. We're playing Naya Tokens. This is the decision. We're playing Naya Token Beatdown stuff. Somehow. And Mecha Godzilla is the only card here. It's remotely playable. Deal. Okay. Goodbye to many picks, but we'll be fine. I think. All right. Well, this pack has nothing for us suddenly. I don't know, Color Man. We were getting a lot in that first pack. Wilt? Chiven Fire? Suddenly, this is heinous. Maybe we shouldn't have taken all the blue cards out just yet. Um, huh. <coughs> <coughs> Season of Growth is not really what we're doing. Yikes. I guess it's suddenly like Deputy or something in case we end up back in blue white. That pack was bad. Oh, now we got Brazen Borrower? Monka. All right. Well, maybe maybe blue white is still open. Maybe blue white is still open. We spoke too soon. All right. Sky Marcher Aspirant. Sure. This works with Ranger of Eos. It's a cheap, aggressive creature that Sea Dasher Octopus can get put onto. I'll take it. I wouldn't say it's a disaster yet, Dr. Lippy. I think we got a good number of cards for blue white. And we didn't miss out on that much with the other picks. Okay, Dauntless Bodyguard, Safara does not look realistic, even with Ministrant and Sky Marcher Aspirant. I'm just going to take this one drop. Essence Capture, sure. Don't know if we're going to play that, but it's at least playable. And all right, well, Divine Visitation did not come back. Castle Lothwain came back, really. And Storm's Wrath. All right, well, we learned a lesson today, chat, which is choose what you're doing and stick to it or something like that. But you can't just play great ramp decks forever, you know? Sometimes you gotta, you gotta take a chance. Miss Cloak Herald, Benthic Biomancer. Uh... Uh... Probably Biomancer. I'd assume opponents are not going to be blocking that much anyway. You did your best, Joe. You did your best. I mean, we got 19... 18 playable spells. Kind of. Not happy with... Oh, Ginger Brute. Great. <laughs> Ginger Brute technically playable here. All right. Uh, wow. Nothing for anything here. This pack is terrible. 
Patient Rebuilding is the kind of card that can win a game by itself. Search for his contest, certainly not what I'm looking to do. Starfield Mystic, also not at all what I'm looking to do. Let's take Rebuilding. Oh, goodness gracious, so many great cards for everybody else's decks. <laughs> There's even an Uro. I'm so sad. Uh, could I still could I still be Bant? I don't really have the lands for it. Uh, God, these packs have just nothing. The thing about Ramp is, like, Ramp just gives you so many more potential playables in every pack. If we're doing any kind of green Ramp thing, we'd have Questing Beast and Uro at the very least. Am I taking Lonely Sandbar? I think I'm taking Lonely Sandbar. Mace the Valiant is awful. I don't know why they keep sticking that card in, into things. Okay, Quench, Gideon, Night Veil Sprite. How's the curve looking? Curve is kind of thick at three already. Gideon is pretty good, though. Hmm. I think I just want to Quench. Try to wield Night Veil Sprite here. Sprite works out nicely with... Yeah, yeah, counters are good. Counters are good. Nightmare Muse, Thief of Sanity, Callous Dismissal, Loyal Pegasus. This one's probably wheeling. This one's probably wheeling. I'm going to take Callous Dismissal. Venerated Loxodon. All right, there we go. There we go. We were going to get rewarded one of those days. Venerated Loxodon's excellent. Uh, this is... Remorseful Cleric rather than Sphinx of Foresight, I do believe. Sphinx is not terrible, but we're not really trying to do that high curve thing. Actually, that was probably Evolving Wilds, wasn't it? All right, Imperian Eagle, great. Okay, now dump Deputy of Detention. And we got a good number of one drops for the Ranger of Eos, that's nice. Patient Rebuilding can go away. Harmonious Archon can go away. Illyrios can probably go away. Oh, belated thanks, by the way, to Anonymous Gray and Anonymous Cheer for the bits. I think I got your uh, earlier cheer. Can use your later cheer. Oh, wow. All right. Well, I want to take this pack and call it a day. This pack has some great stuff. It's got to just be Staggering Insight. We don't have a lot of counters to protect stuff with Staggering Insight on it. I'm almost tempted to take off one mind. We've got a great mix of humans and non-humans here. This does not like a super good Staggering Insight deck. As far as being able to protect stuff goes. I'm going to take off one mind. I just think anything we put Staggering Insight on just dies immediately. Uh, Insight can run away with games, but folks, have you seen these? Have you seen these matches so far? Have you seen how much mono red there is with like infinite shock effects? Have you seen how we you don't even have that many cheap flyers? Genuinely don't think it was insight there. I think we're much more of like a value flyer deck that just keeps hit, keeps putting stuff down and hitting you with it. We got Mentor of the Meek for grind. We got Ranger of Eos for grind. All right, we're now getting the packs full of unplayable stuff back. Still don't really have any enchantments for Starfield Mystic. Sprite's a good pickup. Pegasus. Open mine is one mana to draw two cards. That is a powerful effect. NJ, I do think I'm averaging under two cards within, with uh, with that. Ooh, Dungeon Geist or Tactician? It's a real pick. Uh, let's go Tactician. When in doubt, cheaper card. Crystalline Giant probably not making it into the deck. I don't even know about Lonely Sandbar. Tap lands are, are pretty brutal. Oh, wow, Terramander. Nice. All right, think about including that one. 
Also helps to think if you don't have the card in turn two, but you have the card in turn 10, is Insight or of One Mind likely to be better? All right, so got a ton of one drops at the end there. That's cool. We are probably a 16 land deck. Let me cut Lonely Sandbar. And a Flames. We got a couple double blue spells, nothing that's double white. And we only make one cut besides that. <laughs> Just Lion Giant is a flyer eventually. That is a point that you've made. You could call that a point. Probably just one of the three drops, like Ministrant, maybe. Melody will sometimes be pretty bad, sometimes be great. Remorseful Cleric, maybe. Maybe just one of the one drops, honestly. Seven of these is a lot. Terramander is just like a 1-1 one -one flyer. Adapting is pretty much never going to happen because we have almost no instants or sorceries. Still is a good late game threat. Loyal Pegasus is also pretty medium. Can't even get a Ski Dash or Octopus onto it. Alright, we'll, we'll cut Loyal Pegasus. Play it like that. Alright, we play one game with this. If it's really fun and really fast, you might play a second one, but the stream's not going to be much longer from here. But this is it. This is our, our, our attempt to play something that's not just Ramp or Mono Red. See how it goes. Have some pretty tight mana requirements, even so. Would have loved a Hallowed Fountain. Oh, Arena crashed. All right, we're going to reload Arena, hopefully step into our first match. Real smooth. Let's just get that back up. Well, whatever happens this first game, it's been a great night of Cube. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out and watching us play some nonsense. It's a real honor to have more than 100 people who just want to watch Cube. Okay, how's this opening hand going to look? Uh, oh boy. It's almost kind of there because of Sea Dasher. Having no white mana sucks. We've got like Callus Dismissal and can put Sea Dasher onto whatever gets dismissed. This is close. But I think it's I think it's a no. I think it's just way too bad if our opponent just doesn't do anything for a couple turns. We have nothing to target with Callus Dismissal. All right, this has to work somehow. We're gonna cut Silent Departure here, I think. Didn't have a lot of time to think about it because of the, the whole crash situation, but we get Charming Prince to scry. Prince can hopefully scry us into some cheap stuff. Maybe get locked on down turn four. Okay, weaponize the monsters. That's scary. I don't like that. All right, so Prince definitely just gonna go ahead and look for more land drops. Sea Dash or Octopus? Am I into that against Weaponize the Monsters? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. This is an island that I've got out here, right? Yeah. Next turn is going to be like Land Drop, Hold Up, Quench, plus Borrower. I think I'm a no on this, honestly. Feels like it's gonna be hard to get it through. I would love like a one drop to curve into Lockstone much more smoothly. Warkite Marauder, all right, opponent is blue-red, it would appear. Sure. So do I just play Ministrant here? Ministrant's kinda good. 
Yeah, I'm going to go Ministrant. If we get a fourth land, I can hold up a Bounce and a Quench. Ministrant also opens me up to play Venerated Locks it on next turn. Phoenix of Ash. All right. Opponent and I are just doing a pure race here. Interesting. Hit the land. So I've got Quench Borrower up, and I think I would like to do that rather than tapping out for Loxodon right now. And I'm just going to borrow the Phoenix before it can get sacked to weaponize in response. Scorch Spitter, that's fine. Don't care too much about that. Ranger of Eos. Ooh, that is a good one. That is a really, really good one. Absolutely love Ranger of Eos here. Let's do it. That is going to be one heck of a Loxodon turn. Next turn, I'm going to take... What do I want here? Probably just a couple two ones seems reasonable. Let's grab Bodyguard Aspirant if we're going to be pumping them with Loxodon anyway. Sure. The Dungeon Geists are here. <laughs> All right. Well, I am taking a lot of damage. It's going to be an interesting race. So I get to go... It's actually going to be tough. I might die. Taking six off of Spitter plus the two flyers hitting me because I can't block with any flyers. Shoot. This might be... This might... Oh, and then a Weaponize just kills me, huh? Can I do anything to get out of this? Oh, I have Borrower. I have Borrower. I can flash Borrower in to fight the Geists. That's something. Okay, put him to eight. Boy, just can't get Loxodon down this game. Indestructible, definitely going on to... Uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so holding up Brazen Borrower here, doing our best to survive. We've got Pride of Conquerors in the deck. Weaponize is still just four damage. I have not been thinking very much about this game, so I may have screwed up somewhere. Dungeon Geist wants to get in. They've got to weaponize the Borrower after it comes into block. Probably the right order there was to go Aspirin into Bodyguard. Bodyguard covering the Aspirin. Callous Dismissal. Okay, that gives you a thing to sack to weaponize. Sure. I think we're just going to die the next turn unless I happen to hit Pride of Conquerors. As I assume, Spitter is just getting sacked to take out Borrower here. Yep. Okay. Okay, need Pride of Conquerors off the top to win this. I just can't block this stuff at all. Nope. And we're dead. Darn. Okay. All right. Well, blue red, blue red tempo worked out nicely. Their workout marauder was great. Uh, I'll try one more with this. Uh, I guess staggering insight might have been actually kind of okay there. 
Would have lasted only one turn, but would have gained us some key life. Hey, Joni, you're coming in right at the end. I'm running out of energy, playing a deck I'm not enthusiastic about, but it's for experimentation. There's going to be lots of cube drafting to come. This hand, yep. Bunch of small stuff, Pride of Conquerors, I'm down for that. We need to become Aaron. Let's run this out tapped. I think it's more That's convenient to turn one than any subsequent turn. Let's just get to curve out two one drops next turn anyway. Put on a white weenie over here. Hmm. Ministrum was actually pretty bad that game. This card might be pretty bad generally. Just very, very uh, poor at contributing to the offensive presence we're doing. Okay, huh. So we've got Pride of Conquerors, which sort of makes me think twice about attacking with Ginger Brute, but didn't think my opponent would block there. I think my opponent on the mono white deck probably assumes they're the beatdown. Okay, just the Naked Tactician into eventually bounce that. For now, I think it's just Ministrant or Eagle. Hmm. I think it's Ministrant, just I don't want Eagle getting killed yet. Might be a good surprise to cast it if Ministrant dies at some point. Gideon, all right, that one's pretty easy to attack down from where we're at. Vigilance on the Tactician, perfect. Ooh, Trickster is excellent here. So it means I just get to... Say goodbye to the Tactician. Trickster down the Guide Mother. Kill Gideon. And just steadily building up a board, not losing anything. Getting to the point where Pride of Conquerors is going to be great. Never fond of playing decks that get brickwalled by a 2-3, but I like our position here. So if I get a land next turn, it's just land Eagle Pride. Big attack coming in. Opponents having a hard time making up their mind about what to do. Is this perhaps settle the wreckage in their mono white deck? Let's see if they tactician me pre-combat. Yeah, okay, sure. Very odd, very odd. So it's just Brood here. Um, okay if they want to block with Guide Mother. I'm not going to give it the bonus because I'd rather play Terramander Eagle this turn. Ah, 
Ah, all right, I put on a second color. That explains some of the weirdness around their sequencing. How little stuff appeared to be in their hand. Quench, darn it. One of the very few cards in the deck that would not have made Pride sufficiently active to get the bonus. Still get to do some attacking here because we have Quench to protect any from any particularly bad blowouts. Hey Ace, last match of the night here, but glad to have you in before it's over. When it's not interested in turning on Administrant. Alright, so almost passed, we can quench anything too scary. Probably. And as soon as we get any other permanent, be it a land or a creature, Aspirant gets to be a 3-2. Harmonious Archon, nope. Wouldn't have even been that good, but still, nope. Just on principle. All right, Venerated Loxodon does get that 10th permanent in, so... What happens after that? We get to go... I guess I'm just pumping everything, right? Let's just pump everything. Hmm, that's a point, Harmless G. That's a point. It's going to take a long time before I can adapt to that, though. And I suspect our opponent's probably just going to die next turn to Pride of Conquerors. But certainly somebody to consider. Staggering Insight. Yeah. Yeah, are we coming in with it? We are coming in with it. All right, well... Maybe they've got the Settle, maybe they've got the Shatter. Or maybe they're just dead. To Pride, this also opens up to Silent Departure. Ministrant, okay. Okay. Land, there we go. All right, so Land makes me just want to bounce this Tactician, I think, over Priding. Let's see. Here at 20, Pride is actually incredibly lethal. Never mind, what was I saying? So... Plus two, plus two to everybody, instant speed, and that is, a uh, yeah, Pride of Conquerors is one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite cards on Arena, I think. It's just, like, underrated, but I managed to play it in all, like, the weird formats. Probably should try to find a way to make it work in Historic, it's such a powerful effect. And, alright, with that, with that clean victory, casting Pride of Conquerors, we're gonna close off for the night, so that was, a uh, two pretty smooth seven wins with Ramp, and then with this blue-white deck, who knows, I'm probably gonna finish it off stream, but you'll, uh, maybe see it. See some other decks tomorrow, so we can start tomorrow's stream with a draft. Tomorrow, we're going to be starting at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to stop by and see another cube draft. I love this format. going to be playing a lot of it. going to be trying to uh, explore a lot of different decks and hopefully still win along the way. All right. <laughs> Good night, everyone. And, uh, ooh, NJ. I might go check that out for a bit. Is uh, What's your Twitch name, NJ? Giant Potato, by the way, thanks for the follow. Alright, well, NJ, if you want to go start, we could, uh... I was going to say we could raid you, but I guess the scheduling won't work out. So let me see who else is streaming Cube. We'll send a raid their way, but I personally... NJ, Mylria. Alright. Start your stream. Start your stream. We raid you. No, everybody knows the stream. You're all seeing it in chat. So we'll go raid someone else, but if you want to go watch NJ, they'll be starting in just a minute. And that is where I will be going. Of course, Ace. Hope to see you for a bigger stretch of the time on Saturday if you're around. Hmm. Uh, oh, Deathsea's cubing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go raid Deathsea. 